the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I want you to listen. You can never command power in the spirit when you are not aware of the Bible says, do not be unaware of the devil's devices. The Greek word there is stratomai, his strategies, his methodology and his ways of doing things. It's not a mystery. Hallelujah. The Bible is a compendium of the activities of Satan through dispensations. So that when we, are about, when we study it, we are able to understand. And with that knowledge, we will have the authority to keep him where he belongs. Hallelujah. Psalm 66 verse 3 It says how all inspiring are your ways Through the greatness of thy power Shall thy enemies submit themselves And this power comes through knowledge Hallelujah The Bible says according as his divine power Hath given us all things That pertains unto life and godliness How through the knowledge of him That has called us into glory And virtue so we we'll talk of weapons of victory. The spiritual arsenals. Listen, listen, look at me everybody. The Bible says, Jesus speaking, it says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Everybody say keys. It didn't say I will give you a key. It didn't say I will give you the key. There are many spiritual arsenals. And all of them serve different purposes in the realm of the spirit. Are you getting me? There is a jurisdiction of the operation where the anointing functions. The anointing, as we know, doesn't just do everything. This is not heresy. There is the jurisdiction of the blood. There is the operation of the name. There is the power of the cross. There is the power of agreement. There are many spiritual arsenals. Are you following me now? And if we understand, whenever you see situations, at once you can read the handwriting on the wall. And you know what diagnosis you can give. And what recommendation you can give. Are you following me now? When you step into a family and you see an oppression of darkness. And they are praying and fasting about it and it does not leave. With your spiritual intelligence, you know what spiritual tool to bring that will cause the devil to bow. This is what spiritual maturity is all about. Hallelujah. The Bible says, what seest thou? Zechariah 1 from verse 18. Don't turn there. It says, and I saw four horns. How many horns? Four horns. It says, these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Israel and Judah. These are the horns that lift up themselves, symbols of authority. Satanic forces stationed across territories. The Bible says, so that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent carpenters. These carpenters have been sent to terrorize these horns. Hallelujah. The carpenters are not men of God. The carpenters are citizens of the kingdom. Men and women, the saviors that the Bible says in Obadiah 21, that will arise from Zion and will judge the Mount of Esau. It's time for many of you to go into your homes with spiritual intelligence. No longer will you be confused. Things are happening and you just know the blood of Jesus or the power of the Holy Ghost or Holy Ghost fire. And after saying it three times, nothing happens and you are short of spiritual arsenals that you'll be equipped the Bible says, he that escapes the sword of Elisha, Jehu will strike. There are spiritual laws. Hmm. Hallelujah. It is only based on that intelligence that when men are saying there is a casting down, you will say there is a lifting up. Because you understand the way the realm of the spirit works. Hallelujah. So part one, we'll be considering, let's just start wherever we can stop. Praise God. 
Paul began to comment. He began to admonish the Hebrew church. Hebrews chapter 5, please, from verse 14. Or from verse 11. Hebrews 5 from verse 11. And then we'll go down to chapter 6, verse 3. Paul was busy speaking to the people and he was disturbed because he wanted to communicate certain deep spiritual things. Let's read verse 11. It says, Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing that ye are dull of hearing. Verse 12. It says, For for when for the time ye ought to be teachers. That means I expect you people to have risen to a dimension that you can begin to communicate these truths that you understand. It says ye have need that one teach you again. The first principles of the oracles of God. It says and have become such that have need of milk. That means there is milk. Are you getting my point? And there is strong meat. Verse 13. For everyone that uses milk is what? Unskillful. You are a Christian. You are born again. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. But you are unskillful. That means you do not have sufficient intelligence to make use of the spiritual arsenals as at when due to the degree of their jurisdiction. The Bible says you are unskillful. In the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. 14. But strong meat, Kapalakata, belongeth to them who are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern. That means when they see things, they don't judge the way men judge. They judge in the light of an information that they have about the realm of the spirit. When you see somebody terrorizing your family, you know that no, you are judging this is not about my uncle or my auntie. There are powers in the heavens. And you know how to be able to bring victory. Not blaming uncle or auntie. When you see your father destroying you, you know that no, my father is a good man. There is something the Bible says, any man who just sees his neighbor and says he's my neighbor that is causing is a babe. He does not have sufficient spiritual intelligence. 6 verse 1. That's the end of verse chapter 5. 6 verse 1. He said, therefore, on account of this need that I've created, on account of the fact that there is an urgency in the spirit for you to rise from the realms of being babes, being taught certain, certain things in the realm of the spirit that will not make you carry authority. Can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? I say this and I say it with all humility. There are many teachings in the body of Christ that will make believers remain babes. And if we remain in that realm, we will die although we are confessing that we are Jesus Christ. We are, we are the disciples of Jesus Christ and so on and so forth. There are many teachings that are good, but if you do not rise, they become misleading. Because, see, this is why many believers stand helpless in the face of Satan. And we go back to we the men of God and the members come and ask us what is wrong and we keep giving all kinds of crafty and childish explanations. The realm of the spirit is only threatened by the degree of light you carry. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ let us go on to perfection. That means there is a higher dimension. Thank God for the things we have studied. Thank God for the fact that, oh, you are this and that. Thank God for these foundational things. But Paul is saying, if we remain at this level, the sophistication of the realm of the spirit requires that there is progressive growth in understanding. If we must be ambassadors, there are people sick with cancer. Men of God have prayed and prayed and prayed. The people have died. There are people with HIV. Headaches have been healed. We have risen people from wheelchair. But why is it that some sicknesses seem to bow? There are laws we need to learn. Otherwise, those people will never be healed. Hallelujah. Let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation. Everybody say foundation. Amazing that most of, most of the teachings we brag about in the church and call Rema, the Bible calls it foundation. Foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, verse 2. And of the doctrine of baptisms and laying on of hands. Power, 
the Bible says it is even, even that realm. Laying on of hands that we believe is the crux of success in ministry. The Bible says it is a foundation. And of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Verse 3. And this is our prayer this night. And this we will do if God permits. Hallelujah. So I'd like you to pray right now in one minute and say, Lord, I refuse to remain at the level of knowledge that I've had. I contend for higher levels of revelation. There is a generation waiting for me. My family members are counting on the revelation I will get tonight. The devil is destroying people. There are territories that are dying. And if we do not contend, there are churches that will pack up and die for nothing. If we do not step in in these dimensions of spiritual understanding to know when to launch attack on the works of darkness and establish what Christ has done. Pray from the depths of your heart. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than these. Tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than these. There's got to be more. Got to be more. There's got to be more than these. For desperate people do desperate things. And we press in It's got to be more. Gotta be more. Help me say, gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more. Gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. We are desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. be more than this. Lord, we are tired of the status quo. It's gotta be more than this. Listen. We are tired of burying people who should not die. We are tired of watching our families run away to harbor as though the word of God is a lie. We are in this series. We are exploring to find answers. What is the answer, oh God? Why we have prayed and fasted about issues and it has not changed? Why am I still being pressed in the night, although I'm born again? Why is it that I'm tightening, I'm giving and the doors are not opening? Can you pray for one minute? We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. We're tired of the status quo. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. Gotta be more than this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. My spirit is fired up this night. Hallelujah. The first thing I want you to know tonight, brothers and sisters, is that we live in a world that is controlled from the realm of the spirit. Never forget this for as long as you live. I began that teaching in the teaching, give me this mountain. I began to explain to us the spiritual dimension of life. Life is everything spiritual. Whether you believe it or not is irrelevant. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It says, For by it the elders obtain a good report. The Bible says, Through faith we understand that the walls, not one, the walls, systems were made. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? I need you to know that the realm of the spirit is real. Whether you are an atheist, whether you are whatever, is irrelevant. There is a real realm that birthed this physical realm. 
That realm was in existence before Genesis 1 verse 1. The real spiritual realm with inhabitants. Praise the Lord. There are realms beyond that which the mortal eyes of man can physically see. That they are not seen does not mean they do not exist. Ephesians chapter 6. Generally, theologically speaking, the book of Ephesians is considered by theologians to contain the highest spiritual truth that um, summarizes the entire scope of the activities of men. Hallelujah. From chapter 1 to chapter 3 in the book of Ephesians, it tells us how and, and brings us to the understanding of our rights and privileges in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Reminds us that we are seated with Christ. The realities of redemption. The things that have been wrought for us on account of what Christ has done. Hallelujah. And so it lets us see that the entire journey of the believer is hinged upon the platform of Christ's finished work. That is on account of his death, his burial and his resurrection. That any other thing that will happen in the kingdom will happen. So, chapter 1, 2, and 3 helps us to expand. Paul tells us how that by revelation he understood this. That we have been raised up with Christ. Hallelujah. And then chapter 4 and 5 begins to tell us how that um, it begins to explain to us, you know, our work as a believer, our character, how to live in the reality of what Christ died to give us. So our walk, chapter 1 to 3 tells us about our sitting with Christ. And then chapter 4 and 5 tells us about our walking. Then chapter 3 tells us how to stand. It begins to tell us that although chapter 1 to 3 has already established the fact that all things have been brought under the feet of Jesus. But there is an enemy, there is an adversity. And because of that we have to be trained to stand. Hallelujah. The psalmist, prophetically speaking about that, he said, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the way of sinners, walk, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, nor stand. So there is walking, sitting, standing. These are three prophetic postures in the spirit. Unfortunately, most people just know how to sit. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? Chapter 6, verse 12. Chapter 6, verse 12. The reality of the realm of the spirit. You don't need to have a vision or a trance to be convinced that there is a realm beyond that which you see. Hallelujah. Can we start from verse 11, please? Verse 11. It says, put on the whole armor of God. Question. The same Paul that revealed to us in the Pauline epistles the revelation of our seated position with Christ now begins to admonish us. He said, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to what? Stand. Why will Paul say stand? Whereas he said we are already seated in heavenly places. Paul said we have been exalted far above thrones and dominions and every name that is named, not just in this age, but in the world to come. Now he's saying, stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12. For we wrestle. Ah, uh -uh. What are you saying again, Paul? We are seated in a position of rest. Now you are talking of wrestling. He didn't say, for we argue. He said, for we wrestle. Not against flesh and blood. But against principalities. Against powers. See how many times the Bible says against. It didn't say for. Against. 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 This is a contention. Look, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. This world is not a playground. Don't let films deceive you. Whether you believe it or not, there is a rude reality that every man born by a woman must face. Especially in this day and age. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness. Where? Where is the location called high places? Stop. Help me. Use your Google map to show me a location called high places. Where do we find it? But the Bible says, 
there are planes in the spirit called high places. Where is it located? Geography students, scholars and intellectuals, help us. Where is the spiritual location called high places? Other versions say heavenly places. I told you, there are heavens and there is heaven. The Bible says the heaven of heavens. That means there are other heavens. We discussed that already. I don't want to go into it. The reality of heaven and hell, we touched that. Many people have gone to all of those astral realms and come back and told us they went to heaven. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There is a real realm, brothers and sisters. There are astral realms. There are people who live in this earth who travel there and come back. They go to get power. They go to get wealth. Real spiritual realms. By the grace of God, I've had the opportunity to minister to probably thousands of people. So I can tell you from the truth of God's word and from experience. There is a real realm. Are you listening to me? There is a real solid realm. The Bible calls Satan that old. Where was he living before Adam came? Because the Bible does not tell us he's young. He said that old serpent. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everybody say the realm of the spirit is real. I want you to also know that the realm of the spirit is not heaven. The realm of the spirit has... All, there are demonic realms, demonic dimensions in the spirit. So if you are caught up in the realm of the spirit... You will just believe that you will see streets of gold. No, sir. You will see a real atmosphere like this. It's just that it is not solid and material. And it is not bounded by three dimensions. I have been there. It is not drama that I read from a book. In the realm of the spirit, there is no time and there is no distance. The concept of time and distance is the concept of physics. Isaac Newton developed it in mechanics to help people relate with the things. A process. But in the realm of the spirit, it does not exist. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. At once. At once. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm sharing? Please do. Hallelujah. Another strange location although we use it prophetically as anywhere the believers are where is mount zion because the bible says ye are come to mount zion that means you can come where is the location of mount zion i'm not talking of geographical mount zion hallelujah there have been many findings in our world today that the world has not been able to offer sufficient explanation one of it is the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. Many people have been able to seek all kinds of explanation. Why is it that there is an intense magnetic field around that region that will wipe away everything at once, no matter how heavy it is? What is it about this strange thing? What is it about tornadoes and hurricanes that sweep across nations? How can a wind remove blocks and kill people? The spirit realm is real. Brothers and sisters, it's as real as this realm. As we are in this meeting right now, there are angels in this place. There are a lot of angels. The angels that have been sent to guard you because every child of God has angels. Once you are born again and you are in Christ. As a matter of fact, even when you are not born again, there are angels. Hallelujah. There are angels. I can prove that to you from scripture. Remember the Bible says, when Peter was bound, the Bible says the apostles were praying. Is that true? When they were praying, the Bible says an angel came and took him out of the first um, barricade second third and led him when he came and knocked the door they opened the door they said they thought it was his angel and they closed it back 
So we have angels. Second proof. Are they not ministering spirits? Send to minister to they that be the heirs of salvation. And the Bible says we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So there are angels. There are also demon spirits. Yes. They are listening to me right now as I'm talking to you. The unfortunate thing is that many of them could not come this far. Because there is always a wall of fire that surrounds the people of God. I'm opening you up to the realm of the spirit. So that you begin to walk with this consciousness. I never walk alone. Never ever walk alone. There are special angels that follow us when we are going for certain ministrations. They are angels that guard revelations. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible says he sent it and signified it by his angel. There are angels that guard the safe delivery of revelations. I am come to give thee Daniel understanding. There are angels that are signed. There are different strata and levels of angels. There are ministering spirits. This caliber of angels walk among men. They walk among men. There is the northern army of God. There are all kinds and varieties. There are seraphs. There are cherubims. There are messenger angels. Different strata of angels. There are not just angels like that. Satan was one of those cherubs. Let me surprise you. The opposite of God is not Satan. Don't insult God. The opposite of God is not Satan. In scripture, God weighed Satan and put angel Michael to handle him. It cannot be God. Twice there was an encounter. One, the mystery in heaven that was shown. Are you listening to me? From the foundations of time. The war in heaven. Michael took care of Satan. The second encounter was during taking the body of Moses. Satan came to claim the body. And Michael said again, the Lord rebuke you. And in the end time, in the, in the last battle, the Bible says that Michael will be released again. Mm. Hallelujah. And so there are different structures. There is an organogram of angels. There are angels that are in charge of praise and worship. There are angels that are in charge of prayer. They take the prayers of God upon files. All these things are in scripture. I'm not talking about the angelic realm. I just want to open you up to the reality of the spirit realm. When you are still in, there are demons watching you. Hello? There are angels watching you. That is the reason why Satan has been able to give himself a name called the accuser. Why is he the accuser? He has a vast army station that monitors the activities of believers part time. Are you aware of that? Praise the Lord. So the realm of the spirit is real. There are four substances that were borrowed from the realm of the spirit into this realm. This is why science cannot fully understand them. Number one, light. Light is not just a physical substance. Light is a spiritual substance. This is the reason why quantum physics is very difficult. It's an attempt to open people up to a realm that is not three-dimensional. Don't blame yourself when people say you are not good in quantum, although read. But I'm just telling you, it's not child's play. Hallelujah. Number two, fire. Everybody look at me. What is this terrible thing called fire? You cannot hold it. Yet it is not threatened by anything. You can't box it. You can't put it in a box and wrap it. It will burn everything. Yet it does not have any force that you can see. But it consumes. These are spiritual realities. Number three, water. This thing called water. Strange. Number four, wind. You can't catch it. But the effect is undeniable. Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? And then you understand. 
that the Lord is seen. Open your eyes. Will you open your ears? Then you understand that the Lord is here. So everybody said the realm of the spirit is real. The psalmist said, Yea, do I walk through a valley called the shadow of death? Who told the psalmist it was a valley and not a mountain of the shadow of death? How did the psalmist see it? The psalmist said, He will give you a garment called praise. So praise is not just what you sing. It's a garment in the realm of the spirit. You can wear it. Hallelujah. The realm of the spirit is an exciting realm. The last thing I want to talk about. Oh, I said four things. Five. There is the fifth one. Words. Words. Dangerous spiritual mysteries that defy physical explanation. Words have sent nations to war. Because somebody, somebody spoke. The earth was created with a word. It will be destroyed with a word. What is it about words? The words that I speak, they are spirit and life. Look at me. I said it here, let me say it again. During the time of the apostles, they didn't have this. I hope you know. What did they call their word of God? Because it was their experience today we call the word of God. So whenever they said the word is quick and powerful, what did they refer to? There needs to be a redefinition in the body of Christ. I believe this, of course. This, I, I'm not against this at all. Hallelujah. The reality of the realm of the spirit. Heavenly places. There are planes. There are dimensions in the realm of the spirit. Another thing I want to tell you is that there are portals from the earth realm that physically open people out to the realm of the spirit. This will shock some of you. Did you hear what I said? There are what? Portals. Look at me please. There are physical portals. It is geography that told us the earth is round or good or what's the shape. I want to tell you that there are portals that physically open men out of this realm i'll prove it to you from scripture the bible tells us listen the bible tells us listen please that when the nation of israel were asked to choose whether they were standing for god or not the bible says the ground opened. is that true swallowed all of them at once and closed back as if nothing happened question is the ground a living thing who asked it to open? Swallow them and close back up. Jacob got to a prophetic portal and he said, this is the gate of heaven. It wasn't just a vision. He said, where I am standing, I'm standing the gates of heaven. When Elijah was going to check out of the earth, he knew the exact place where there was a physical portal that will take him out of the earth. Beyond the Jordan, he said, Elisha, ask your request quickly, because very soon you will see chariots come to take me. And immediately he looked, he saw chariots that came and picked his physical body out of the earth realm. When Jesus was about to go to heaven, in Acts chapter 1, he knew the exact place to stay, and he started levitating till he disappeared. Where are these portals? Ruth Heflin, one great woman that walked with the Lord, said a bit about this but there was a woman called an around tree an around tree was with jesus every day of 2005 every day and she said that the lord jesus told her that there are 15 portals 15 that open people up now i i i'm, I'm just browsing through it because we have to do a lot of studies she, she showed all of them there is a book within you know, the priestly bride and the heavens open is you may not be able to get it except in pdf formats but i just want you to know that there are realms hallelujah there are realms 
The third thing I want you to know is that spirit beings can materialize themselves and manifest in this realm. Are you getting me? Human beings cannot do that. But because the realm of the spirit is higher, human beings, I mean spirit beings, can materialize themselves and come into this earth realm. We are not alone. We've spoken about it, right? The mystery of the aliens. We explained it. Because the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6, how that the world grew wickedly. Is that true? Is that in your Bible? And the Bible says the sons of God. I told you that word son of God is not technon or wheels of God. It was just a name. Demonic forces, spirit beings, superhuman people. The Bible says they came and they slept with the daughters of men. Is that true? And they gave birth to an aberration. Half man, half human being. We call them giants. Nephilims. They are still alive till today. And the Bible says, before the coming of Christ, it will be like the days of Noah again. That means there will be a repetition of that event. It's already happening. The unidentified flying objects, UFOs. Hello, planet Earth. I shall not die. You better know what you need to know to live. Otherwise, it will be a hateful time of life. I have a documentary. I have a documentary where people were digging into the earth realm. When they were digging, they found a place that could take 20,000 people below the earth and it was made by aliens. I have a documentary where these aliens have had meetings with United States presidents right from 1914s. They are alive. They are around. They are in the earth. Let CNN fool you. Let me tell you, when the church is raptured, this book will become a rebestseller again. Because every historian will buy it to try to understand. Everything this Bible said will come to pass. Every. Hallelujah. There are many realms. The dream realm is the realm of the spirit. Your dream realm is a real realm in the spirit. It's not those psychosomatic, psycho whatever you know, uh, subconscious, all this, anything that is not physical is spiritual, period. Hallelujah. God came to Solomon in a dream. Was it, was it a mirage? It was a real solid experience. Joseph had an encounter not to leave Mary in a dream. A dream realm is a real realm. That's why somebody can have something in a dream and wake up physically. Is that true? Have you seen people sleep and they flood them and they woke up with physical marks all over there? Have you seen that happen? So how did that happen? Thank you, Jesus. The second thing I want you to know is that Satan is real. Everybody said, one to go. Satan is real. Listen, one of the things that secular humanism is promoting in the western world and is creeping gradually into Africa is that Satan is trying to convince men using the tool of intellectualism that he does not exist. So people now teach, even men of God in church, they say the only devil that is there is your inner mind. Have you had those kind of psychopathic, devilish Christian science teachings? The only devil is the one in your mind. And if you can shift your mind away, you bring out your limited you. Ah, be careful, oh. be very careful. Some of those teachings, the Bible says, in the latter days, men will give themselves to deceptive spirits. Different demons have appeared to people and brought all kinds of theology that we promote in the body of Christ right now. Satan is real. Satan is not a mirage. Satan is not one bull with horns as Freemasons tell us. Or the one you see in Tom and Jerry. Or all of those cartoons. Let me tell you the truth. Satan is real. Everybody say it. Satan is real. Demons are real. Say it. And wickedness is real. Satan is real. The Bible says when the sons of God came to meet with God, Satan was part of, their, of them. A real person. And God looked at him and said, ah, oh boy, where are you coming from? He said, 
going to and fro. He's a living thing. He's not a flower. Satan is not fire. He's a living thing. He can move. Only God knows how many times he has passed your street. <laughs> not demons. The real Satan himself. Hallelujah. I also want you to know that there are three qualities that make Satan not to be like God. Or there are three qualities that will test everything and put God in a position where he is alone. Number one, omniscience. Omniscience is the ability to know all things. Satan does not know all things. Please get this straight to your mind. Satan does not know all things. For instance, what you will become. Satan does not know. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear. He said, eye has not seen. Any kind of eye, it has not seen. Nor ear heard. There are ways in the realm of the spirit that Satan can peep and have an idea. This is what soothsayers and diviners and necromancers, they can use stargazing and astrology to predict certain things. And wow people and perform magic like the Egyptian magicians. Hallelujah. Satan is real. Demons are real. Wickedness is real. Satan is not omniscient. He does not know all things. If he knew all things, he would have known where Moses was hiding and not waste time killing everybody. If he knew all things, he would have gone to kill Jesus at once. His trial and error. See, do you know why Satan killed Cain? I've told you. There was a prophecy in the Garden of Eden. The seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. Eve gives birth to Cain. And Satan thought that Cain is the seed of the woman. So he came and entered Cain. Then he was shocked. And when he found out that they gave birth to another child, he said, Cain, kill Abel in case Abel is the seed of the woman. Are you seeing that? When Moses was born, Satan thought Moses was the seed of the woman. Then he missed it again. He kept, that's why when John the Baptist was born, and he began to manifest. He moved through the scribes to ask him, Are you the Messiah? In other words, let's verify. And Moses, I mean, Elijah, um, John the Baptist kept confusing them. He said, I'm a voice. He said, Go confuse us. Who are you? We want to kill you. That's why Herodias asked for his head. What will you do with the head of the man? That's why when Jesus said, All right, I'm not hiding it again. I am. They started following him till he died. So it was a plan. Satan killed. I mean, Jesus allowed Satan through people to kill him. And I will tell you why. It's still a law in the realm of the spirit. If you kill a man, the person's blood is permitted to haunt you for life. We'll talk about that. Don't worry. John 8.44 Who is Satan? Who is this guy called Satan that has threatened people? When you are going home alone, you just start hearing sounds that you shouldn't hear because you are afraid. If there is Satan. If you watch a Nigerian film, we watched one fearful film years ago called, uh, what they call it, Ultimate Power. Ah! That film was not very encouraging. Hallelujah. It says, Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. It says, He was a murderer. From the beginning. Ah, ah. That's a terrible description. That means there is a story we don't know. Where is the story that brought Satan as a murderer? There are hidden stories enshrined. So Jesus was saying, I know this guy, yo. There are lots of stories you don't know. You just know Genesis from 1 verse 2. There is a lot more. Even part of his archives was that he was once a murderer. When did this happen? From the beginning. And he abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. He said when he speaketh. He speaketh a lie of his own. He said for he is a liar. And the originator of all them that lie. The word lie there is not just negating the truth. It is deception. Satan is a deceiver. His, his character is to deceive. He deceived the whole world. The badge of Satan is deception. What is deception? To make men err from the truth. 
He says, ye err, not knowing the scriptures. Deception. So every time the spirit of the Antichrist is manifesting in a place, there is deception. I spoke about that prophetic insight into God's agenda. You can get the teaching. Deception. Hallelujah. Let's hurry up. Revelations 12 verse, verse 9. Revelations 12, I believe verse 9. Let's turn there quickly. It, or verse 7. Let's start from verse 7. It gives us another history that many of you may have not paid attention to. And there was war in... Why will there not be war on earth when even in heaven there was war? Is that in your Bible? Heaven there was war. Michael and his angel fought against who? The dragon. And the dragon fought against his angels. This was Satan. And prevailed not. Neither was there found a place for him in heaven. This was the judgment before Genesis 1 verse 2. Listen. The Bible says in Genesis 1 1. It says in the beginning. The beginning of beginnings. Deathless past. It says God created the heavens and the earth. We don't know how long that was. No historian can know. Are you following me now? Then, between Genesis 1 verse 1 and Genesis 1 verse 2 was millions and probably billions of years. Are you following me now? This story is sandwiched between Genesis 1 verse 1 and 1 verse 2. There was a lot of things that happened. And the Bible says Lucifer was cast down. That was, it was the judgment that led to the chaos in Genesis 1 verse 2. Are you getting me now? Now the earth, after that judgment, was void. There was water. There was darkness. And then God was going to recreate the earth. What happened in Genesis 1 verse 3 was a recreation. That's why Elohim said, the first thing he said was, let there be light. The light there was not sunlight. Because a few verses later, he made two great lights. One to rule the day. So the light there was not sunlight. To know more about that light, you go to John 1. He said, in him was light and that light was the light of man so that light is the quality of his person that sponsors creation let there be light hallelujah it says and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent aha uh -huh, you see now so this serpent story is not a it's a very old story are you getting me this issue of serpent. Are you seeing why you see things around snakes? Snakes, snakes, snakes. Deliverance with snakes. Serpent. He said, I have given you power to tread upon serpents. What was Jesus saying? Couldn't he just say to tread upon the devil? Why did he use the word serpent? I will tell you. He said, Satan, which deceived what? Look at how crafty Satan is. The Bible says Satan, it is within his craftiness to deceive the whole world. He was cast into the earth and the angels cast with him. Deceives the whole world. He deceives the whole world. He accuses the brethren, the Bible says, day and night. It was Satan. Listen, it was Satan who went and God was speaking to him. He said, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan said, of course, uh -uh, after going to and fro the earth. I must have seen Job. He said, did you cover him for nothing? Take away the barricade. Give me permission. That's another law in the realm of the spirit we are going to talk about. Satan confessed that he could not touch a man. Satan testified before God that it was impossible for him to touch a man. Do you know there are men Satan does not touch today? Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and will not find nothing of himself. When, see, listen, when Jesus became man, remember the Bible tells us Satan is the God of this world. The God of the system, cosmos, not the earth. Cosmos. The system. Hallelujah. That was why Satan looked at Jesus. Come. This, this is what he did to Jesus in the temptation. The Bible says, when he came and met him, he said, turn this stone to bread. Jesus didn't shout at Satan. Why? And then he said, follow me. And Jesus was following Satan. He took him to a mountain and showed him the kingdoms. 
How can Satan drag Jesus and Jesus will just follow like this? I will tell you why. Because Satan was the legal occupant of the earth. He collected the keys from Adam. And until then, the keys had not been collected yet. So he could brag. He said, Jesus, I know you came to collect this key. Let's negotiate. Bow, let me just give you more. You go to the cross. If Jesus didn't go to the cross, there would be no blood. Satan would have collected it back from man. So Jesus said, no, I have to go through a process. Blood must speak. Satan was wise. Listen, if, if Jesus gave him the key, Satan would have laughed. Later on, he would have collected it back from man because there was no blood. It's the same deceit that he did for Cain. Cain sacrificed and refused to put blood. And so his sacrifice was not accepted. Because Satan was afraid. Let the sacrifice of Cain not be accepted. Paradventure he is the seed that will bruise him. So he deceived him. Why this waste? Give yourself short cut. Just use vegetables. And Abel there was blood on his sacrifice. And he reached the heavens. When Elijah was going to call on God. He said get me blood first. Without blood I cannot call on God. I will explain to you. Why every time they kill in this country. People become richer. The mystery of blood money. Every money in the earth is blood money. Whether it's the blood of Jesus or the blood of demons. There is blood that sponsors everything. Listen. Wherever we can stop tonight, we'll stop. John 10.10 10. The Bible says, The thief, another name for him. The devil is very hard working. Look at the names he earned for himself. By trying different methods. It's his methodology that gave him these names. Another name now we are seeing. The thief. The dragon was not enough for him. The deceiver. The accuser. Now he has earned himself another name. The thief. The thief cometh not. That means you will never see Satan except to do this. To steal. To kill. To destroy. Everybody say to steal. Say to kill. Say to destroy. So if anybody fools you. That the devil doesn't have any plans for your life or your family. Let me shock you now. Get out of that deceit quick before it gets too late. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan pursued Jesus from birth till he went to heaven. From birth till he went to heaven. Is that true? Satan was, he paid people to say Jesus was not alive. He's still paying people today. Paying Channel O, paying MTV, paying his envoys. Remember our teaching last week? Envoys of his presence. Satan also has envoys. He's a deceiver. He's the arch enemy of the church. Satan is the arch enemy of the church. What is his purpose? Look at me. If, if this is where I stop, this night is alright. I must let you, let's uncover this Satan puzzle. Look at me, everybody. Why is Satan desperate to destroy man? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Why wouldn't it, there are people who used to say, why would the devil let me go? Let me go now. Eh? Let my family go. The devil said, you have not seen anything yet. If you know what I suffered before you were born, you do, I don't plan to leave you until I... See, many of you don't know how old Satan is. Satan tried Moses. He tried everybody. He didn't leave them. They forced him to leave them. So you, you just come in the middle of history and believe because you just said, oh, I'm born again. The devil said, okay, let's concentrate on others. You think so? The angrier he gets, he gets angry by the day because his time is short. He's more determined over our generation than any other generation. Listen, I want to tell you something. From the 70s, down to the 90s, Satan had been plotting a dangerous arsenal against the American church. He deceived them into believing that when you are born again, that's all. They taught it and they transferred it to us. Look at what is happening to America now because of that gospel. Who would have known that a man would look at another man and wants to sleep with him? Even a preacher. Look at it was happening behind the scene. While they were just telling themselves everything is okay, the devil is saying, time, I am patient. 
I can be patient for a whole generation. He kept mapping his strategy. Right now, they are removing the commandments. They are doing everything. People are occupying positions. And he's coming to Africa softly. And God is raising people. Say, Joshua Selman, arise. You are this horn. And Koinonia, arise. Yes! Because if we keep allowing this incomplete gospel to fool us, one day, a day will come, catastrophe will happen again in Nigeria. Maybe we'll start sleeping with animals. But there are carpenters that will not bow. Look at what has happened to America, brothers and sisters. This was a place I was discussing with somebody. I said, where are the people who carried the mantles of Smith Wigglesworth? Where are they? They were, do you know Satan made sure a generation did not take the mantle? While these guys were preaching, Satan was busy taking. He started destroying these people from a tender age. And right now, Cartoon Network, all of these many networks, I'm not saying they are bad, but I'm saying there is another conspiracy to destroy young people. Satan can be patient even if he's 50 years right now they will show sex in a cartoon and do something something that was for entertainment and children are watching and the parents say they are small hold on very soon you will see them get up one day and you will see the drama that begins to happen you will see police with your son where is he coming from he went to sleep with somebody they say oh yeah let's go to the prison that's where you will know that there is drama you say you 12 years 12 years what do you know about this i watched it somewhere Or you catch, look at all the people that are terrorizing the country. Which old man has the strength to carry God? Who doesn't like his life like that in his old age? After suffering, he wants to enjoy the remaining one decade or two de decades. Young people. Because, I'm sorry to say this and I have a lot of honor for our father. But their eyes are becoming dim like Elisha. And, and like Eli. And it's money that is making that eyes become dim. So they are concentrating on building a lot of empires and therefore right now many churches do not have respect for the youth there are many churches that don't even have provision for sunday school again is that true and they think it is not necessary young people in many churches don't have a place again the elders come with their philosophy this little boy now no provision for him so he will get up with a godless mindset they just leave them to be playing outside as if demons cannot enter them. When you say anything, they say, please, don't be fanatical. It's children. Until the day, the child says, I am the one that tied the father's head. The, the father will look at the child, six years old, say, yes, I'm the one that tied your head. This is what is happening around. This is what is happening around. Don't laugh. I counsel people all the time. The whole world lies in wickedness. Wake up tonight. The weapons of our warfare is a deceiver, the arch enemy of the church. Let me round up quickly by telling us what the agenda of Satan is. Satan is very visionary. He's not just trying to chase people up and down. Hallelujah. Listen, I want to tell you something. The devil is not interested in frivolities. There is a reason why he wants to get people down. Three reasons. Number one, Satan is on a revenge mission. You must understand this. Everybody say revenge mission. Have you watched films that they came and destroyed the actor's people and they thought they were dead and the actor said, I must revenge. All these Chinese films, Satan is on his own Chinese film. He has been doing it since and he will not give up. This, you see this story we just read in Revelation? That thing stung the ego of Satan. God didn't even fight. It was Michael that arranged him. They sent him to the earth. And Satan had been angry. Now guess what? What was Satan's annoyance? Listen. Satan was the value cherub that covereth. Are you getting him? Because the angels of God excel in strength. Why do they excel in strength? Because they are standing in the presence of God. And because God is ever changing. They are a reflection of his ever changing nature. So Satan being the closest cherub to God, got to a point where he was an embodiment of all. Even other angels. Listen, Satan had the power to discipline other angels. That's what the lake of fire was created for. The, I've told you this. The lake of fire is not hell. Remember? 
I prove to you from scripture that hell, death, and the grave will be cast into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is part of God's kingdom. It had been there. It had been there. There's no time I would have shown you from the word of God. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Oh, it has been there, yes. They are not just creating it. They are finished sins. That was the reason why when Satan conspired and he was, what did he want? He wanted to exalt himself and carry the nature of God. He had the likeness of God. The angels have the likeness of God. That's why they excel in strength, the brightness of his glory. Are you getting me? God has two hands. Angels have two hands, not three. Are you getting me? If you see one with three, be careful. Be very careful. Hallelujah. So that's his likeness. But Satan wanted the image of God. That quality that can make him to begin to legislate like God. And God said, uh uh, you have gone too far. And he cast him down. And guess what? He created man and now gave man the prayer request of Satan. You get the point? God now gave us that. Satan was watching. When God said, let them have dominion. Satan said, what? This is what you threw me down for. It's unfair. It, that's why occultic tell you that God was unfair to Satan. This is the unfairness. They say, how can God refuse to? He punished Satan for wanting something and gave man who did not ask for it. That's why I say, what manner of love? You see it? What manner of love? So Satan said, no way. This is a mockery to my personality. God will mold clay. You know how angels were made? Angels were not made from sand. Angels were made. How many of you have seen lightning? Lightning. That is the material of their creation. The least angel was made from that light. So Satan watched God mold clay. He weaks, he uses the weak things. Are you getting me now? So he used clay and put his image and Satan said, Come on. No, no way. We are going to fight against this. So that anger is what Satan still has towards you. You gave your life to Christ and you believe Satan is your friend. Now, with all this story I've told you, do you think he wants to leave you? Hallelujah. This is that old story. So Satan came to Adam. Listen, why did he come to Adam? He came to Adam because he saw God giving him the keys. God gave him the keys. And he knew that through reproduction, he was going to reproduce people after his kind, who are after the kind of God. And they will intimidate Satan again. Satan cannot stand seeing people with the image of God. They, how many of you, let me, let's, let's be very honest. Brothers will understand this. Brother, you like a particular lady. You don't know what to do about it. The thing is eating you. Then somebody that you feel is not up to you will just come and meet her. And then the lady will be dying for the person. You get that pain, multiply it times infinity. That's what Satan is feeling today. Because the church is the bride of Christ. You see that pain. So every time I stand, mortal clay, I say, let it be. And it becomes. Satan is annoyed. How can clay, clay, the psalmist say, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Did you not see angels that you could make men? What is man that thou art mindful of him? Not the son of man that thou visitest him some age. He said you have made him a little lower than Elohim. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. This is how special you are. If you understand this, you will not let any man drag your life in a mud. It took God a lot to make you what you are. That's a permanent cure for inferiority. Just see the effort God made to birth you. See how many angels would have taken your place. They all stood hoping and God said, I have another plan. It's not one of you. He started molding clay and breathed into that clay and called it Adam. Even when man fell, God went out of his way to start pursuing man. He pained Satan again. I fell once. You punish me. Man has fallen many times. You are still looking for him. This is injustice. You see it? You see what pain Satan. So he came and met Joshua the high priest. 
and said, God, I'm coming to accuse. This guy is a priest. He's garment. You punish me for falling. Now look at this man. And God said, I just love him. Case closed. I am God. I can veto anything. Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. Why will I not love him with all my heart? This is not an issue of psyching you. You let aside your majesty, gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign forever and now exalted you. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. Gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. Listen, if you stop loving God because He didn't give you a husband, you are a wicked person. Look at what He went through. And will He not give you prosperity or ministry? You see why God gets angry when men stop trusting him. He says you are ungrateful people. Look at what I did to you. Only because the breakthrough did not come. Now you are backsliding. That's why I love him with my life. Money or no money. Ministry or no ministry. He has already done too much. Too much. Listen. If God called one of the angels and gave him his image, he is still God. How, look at how many times people fail God. And it's not like we went and we were repentant. He was the one chasing us and begging. This thing, this thing is still paining Satan till tomorrow. Why will God leave his throne? Let me tell you, when Satan saw Jesus becoming a baby, he knew that this was the height of, in quote, stupidity of God. Not only did God chase man through the prophets, now the word became flesh. Came and entered the womb of a woman. Was patient for 30 years. Men insulted him. That's why he came to Jesus and said, I am concerned about your humiliation. Take the keys. Just bow to me. And God said, no. That's why the Bible says, wherefore God so highly. God was so impressed by the humility of Jesus. Look at all the stars he created. Yet, he degraded. There are cadres in the realm of the spirit. He became lower than the seraphs. Lower than, that's why, see, to an extent, the Bible says, after his fasting and prayer, angels came and ministered to him. They were consoling their maker. What humility. So, Satan is on a revenge mission. There is anger and annoyance. That's why he will not leave your family. That's why he will keep deceiving preachers to tell people everything is alright. Just shake your body and feel nice. Let me tell you the truth. Get out. I'm not saying be angry or criticize any man of God. <laughs> but the moment you do that, Satan start taking a breath of fresh air and says, please continue. If you need money for this kind of ministry, I'll keep giving you money. That's why some people get money without praying. They think it's God that is giving it. Satan is saying, come at this level. If it's if money will make you not to pray, take the money, stop praying. Just be enjoying the money. Let me continue dealing with other people. But there are some people that have determined money or no money, it can't stop our prayer. Every day we will shake the gates. Kaboto Kata. They must hear this sound. We must register our presence. Prosperity or no prosperity. Whether my family needs help or not, it's a sign. I'm just letting Satan know. Hello, good morning. Ambassadors are still alive.
Hallelujah. The second reason, listen, is because there is something called the written judgment. Judgment that has been written for Satan. I hope you know that. Nobody can pray it. We cannot gather now and say, God, forgive Satan, please. Uh -huh. It is written. Are you getting me now? So Satan believes. Listen. Satan knows he is going to the lake of fire. I hope you know that. He has deceived the demonic realm to believe that he will overthrow mankind. Listen. And except the army rise, it looks like it's possible. Because when you see the way Satan is possessing and oppressing families, it looks like there is no hope. So Satan keeps convincing the demons and say, if we continue, a day will come we will destroy mankind and God will do another strategy and this lake of fire agenda might be cancelled. Are you getting it now? Because for as long as the church does not rise, Jesus cannot come. I hope you know that. Yeah. The coming of Jesus is not a mystery. Please, don't. I have shown you. I have shown you. Jesus is not coming like a thief in the night to the church. Brothers and sisters. 1 Thessalonians 5. Please, very quickly. 1 Thessalonians 5. Let's just settle this in once and for all. I've told you. He's coming like a thief in the night. The Bible says that. The question is to who? Not to the church. How can he love us so much and come like a thief in the night to us? Who is he afraid of that is coming like a thief? Let's look at it. See, a lot of theology that we got, we believe them, we are convinced. Everybody, look up, I'll start reading. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write to you. Verse 2. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh like a thief in the night. This is where many of our theologians stop. Is that true? But there is more. Read on. For when they, who are the day? Not us. When they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. If you love God and you believe in his word, read verse 4, 1 to go. Is it not in your Bible? Is that not it? He said, but ye, brethren, he has spoken about they, the foolish virgins who are outside. Now he's saying, ye, brethren, you are not in darkness. So why should it come in the night? He says that that day should overtake you like a thief. Is it not the spirit and the bride that tells the world to come? The world does not just come. The spirit Koinonia in partnership it is the church in partnership with the Holy Spirit who say we have conquered the systems king of kings come and behold the works of your bride and he will come and come and harvest a church without spot or wrinkle so it is because we are in the end times that God is releasing apostolic and prophetic graces to accelerate the advancement of the kingdom there are souls to be won a lot of people who are saying Jesus is coming, they don't have a passion for God. It is true, don't get me wrong. Jesus is really coming soon. Very, very soon. That's why he puts an urgency upon us. That's why we are launching things like Project 10,000 to make sure that we can push this gospel. That's why we are sending all our messages free. We don't have time to look for money right now. There is an urgency on the ground. Why do we do all of these things? If we are looking for a name, can't we just write books and be receiving royalties? We are smart enough to do research. All the messages we have preached, if we change it into books and just balance and be receiving royalty, at least one of them will be a bestseller. Don't you think so? So what puts this fire? What makes you leave your house and come and sit down? And other people do not understand. You are a savior to them. And they are now criticizing you. Don't be afraid. You are the savior that will arise. Whenever people talk and say, You said, don't know. Uh, you have another spirit. It's the spirit of Christ. Don't just come because you want a husband. Or because you want a wife. We, we dedicate miracle service for that. 
but there is an urgency there is a curriculum of the spirit we must cover on time hallelujah let me tell you satan hates this meeting beyond your imagination never make mistakes if you see people coming like this it is because he cannot stop them it's not that he doesn't want to he cannot because keys have been given to us and our job is to threaten him i my life's goal among the numerous goal is to give satan heart attack before jesus comes to take me home i'm not sure i may die before he comes because he's coming really soon hallelujah when we do everything we salute the earth and check out and say Toh, we have tried those who didn't listen to us i'm leaving my bible you can get it in zaria and we'll check out we will in case all you are doing is amassing wealth and amassing everything if it is not for the kingdom i have a root shock for you you may not live to enjoy it because we will be going that's when you will see the vanity of life so the bible says lay for yourself treasures in heaven why are you i'm not against a life of comfort hallelujah but let your concentration be on the things of god so satan deceives us husband and wife i'm not against marriage again and all of these things oh job i don't have a job god i will backslide and god is saying after all i've done or your backslide now is your own fault and the devil is saying please go ahead backslide i will supply you the grace the bad friends all the arsenals you need to quickly backslide that's why you can download any junk in the internet free of charge because the devil wants to accelerate your backsliding and then we the men of god satan keeps making us sleep and all that we are concerned doing is criticizing people and saying what god didn't call us to do hallelujah whereas we should concentrate on building the kingdom we are here arguing about frivolities arguing about it. is he right to wear captain on stage or is right to wear this all of those things the devil is saying continue i beg you any opportunity to distract the church the devil is saying this is what i want so the man of god now has a lot of money they give him a lot of jeep he said my soul find rest no prayer no study no anything and the person is happy and he says i i run a ministry of so so, so number of people and uh, i'm very fulfilled the devil said thank you more of this more of this but when satan finds people who when god blesses them it doesn't change it the devil says, how do we throw these people down See, the devil is thinking of, while you are sleeping, he's not sleeping. They are just meeting and saying, for God's sake, how are we going to put Aaron down? As in the middle of the discussion, then you wake up. You just felt like ventilating your spirit by one o'clock in the night. And you are shaking the car keys, meaning it does not matter. The car keys didn't change anything. Rise up on your feet. Let's close. Come on, let's begin to pray in the spirit. We have a passion, passion. to see passion. his kingdom come. Pray. Say Lord to see your kingdom come. It's my desire to be a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Your prayer is an eternal investment for yourself, for your family, for your church. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Three prayer points and we're out of here. Number one is a prayer of gratitude. You're going to say, Lord, I never saw your love in this light. Now I know you care about me. How can I kill myself? Suicide? What for? 
Say Lord, I thank you for your love. So Thank you for your love. In spite of myself, in spite of my limitations, in spite of my shortcomings, thank you, thank you for loving me enough to seek me. Oh yes, thank you because you are not a man. Thank you because you are not a religious person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You're going to say, Lord, I receive grace to contribute in whatever way that will show you that I love you and I'm interested in your agenda. Whatever way. By casting out devils, by financing the kingdom, by getting them saved, by getting them through the Holy Ghost, by praying for preachers, by praying for pastors, by not gossiping about people, whatever contribution, no matter how little, I receive praise, 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 praise. Whether it's to pray for men of God, whether it's to show you in your life, whether it's to show you to the kingdom, whether it's to get men filled with the Holy Ghost, whether it's to produce tribes, whatever contribution you do, I receive praise. Hallelujah. Listen. Brothers and sisters, can I tell you something? Look at me. Do you know how desperate Jesus is to see his kingdom come? To see souls saved? No matter how little you contribute, you will hear him telling you thank you. I know not everybody is interested. You are going to pray and say every demonic hole that attempts to shift me away from the things of God, lukewarm spirit, bad friends, bad associations, be far from my life. Open your mouth and pray. Come on, pray. Outside, pray. Pray God for I'm made of my mind. I'm made of my mind. I'm made of my mind. No going back. Money or no money. No going back. I am committed to see your kingdom come with my finances, with my anointing, with my voice. You have given your best. I will give my best. Why should I not put a gospel ring to? Why should I put junk music in my phone? Why should I be afraid to wear a shirt that says I'm a kingdom addict? Why should I be ashamed to preach Jesus Christ? Because the lady is fine? Or because the guy is handsome? Or I don't want to be embarrassed? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please take it down again. Hallelujah. Next week I'm going to teach you a song. This song came while I was in Kaduna. You gave your everything. I give my everything. You gave your everything. 
So I give my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Listen, it's a simple song. You have my everything. You have my everything, Lord. You have my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Let's try one more time. You have my everything. You have. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me. All of me, Lord. You have my everything. Hallelujah. It's a build up and I want us to participate tonight. Please don't just write, believe what you're writing, concentrate. I said it the last time, for many of us, this may be the link between where we are and where God wants us to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I told us it's a course and I read out the curriculum let me review it quickly the areas we'll be touching now the subject of spiritual warfare is a very broad subject with different perspectives some biblical some emotional some cultural hallelujah we're examining the biblical concept of spiritual warfare and this is very important hallelujah and um, there are just five aspects we are going to touch. We touched a few and we will continue from there. We started the last time with the reality of the spirit world, the spirit realm. Hallelujah. I, I showed us from scripture that the spirit realm exists. That all we see is not all there is. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then we said we are going to talk on the mystery of wickedness. What is really the agenda of Satan? Why the wickedness in the world? I touched a bit on that also. And then we we'll talk on the realms and jurisdiction of satanic operations. The realms and jurisdiction. How far is far? What is the degree of access that Satan can have in the life of a man or a territory or a family? And then the fourth area of consideration is the weapons of victory. What are the spiritual arsenals that have been put at our disposal to establish and maintain our victory? I think this is one of the most important parts of the teaching, the weapons of our victory. Hallelujah. And then we'll wrap it up with um, commanding victory, spiritual laws and the rules of engagement. It's not enough to know the weapons and the arsenals that you have. You must understand how to engage them scripturally. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I started the last time talking to us about the book of Ephesians. How that theologically speaking, the book of Ephesians is considered to, to contain the highest church truth. Six chapters that are divided into three segments. Hallelujah. The first part tells us what we have become. On account of what Christ did for us on the cross. Tells us that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Why are you all looking like this? Ah. Praise God. Is it because I'm talking of warfare? Everybody is just waiting. Let me know what is going to destroy my family. Take it easy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Be at peace. Hallelujah. 
you will see how cheap Satan is at the end of this teaching. Really, really. Look, let me tell you something. Not everybody is intimidated by Satan. He knows that there are people that know him. How many of you have some brothers that um, will go into a place where nobody knows them and they'll just be shining and lying? And the day you come, you say, what did you say? You say you were staying in a three-bedroom flat. Or, God, I know you. We grew up together. That's what we'll do to the devil. We tell him, no, all this, this noise you are making, we know you. We know where we know ourselves. Behave and live. Hallelujah. Say amen if you believe that. Amen. So that all of those threats, when somebody comes to tell you, I know you will not make it. I know you. And you're crying and running up and down. Save your tears. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the book of Ephesians talks to us about being seated with Christ and then it also tells us how to walk. How to live the Christian life, the Christian character. Hallelujah. From chapter 3 down to chapter 5. And then chapter 6 tells us how to stand against the wiles of the enemy. I don't want to go over part 1. Please, we have the, the teachings Listen to it very, very well. And there was something I shared in part one. I don't know if I will repeat myself, but you need to hear it. Hallelujah. I told us the reason why Satan is all around looking for people. Praise God. Praise God. There is a reason why Satan is chasing everybody on earth. Believer, unbeliever, there is a reason and you must know why. I spoke about it quite extensively in the last teaching. Among other reasons, I told us that I spoke to us a bit about the creation of angels. How that angels were not made from the dust. Is that true? What we call thunder, the lightning, that was their material of creation. They were made from light. Hallelujah. That's why they can translate themselves. The Bible says Satan has translated himself as an angel of light. They can translate themselves. And um, so Satan really wanted the image of God. That part of God that makes God, God. God denied him and then molded dust from the earth that he once walked upon. And then God took that which Satan desired and put it in man. And man became Satan's arch enemy. Hallelujah. Alright, let's get to tonight's teaching. The mystery of wickedness. This is very important. The mystery of wickedness. I have a bad news and I have a good news. Let me start with the bad news. The bad news is wickedness is real. Say it after me. I know it's a bad news. Just say it. First John chapter 5 verse 9. First John. Chapter 5, verse 19, I'm sorry, not 9. First John 5, 19. Are you there? Some people are opening the Old Testament. You must be joking. Hallelujah. First John 5, verse 19. If you are there, let's read together. One to read. And we know that we are of God. And the whole world, the whole world lieth in kindness, brotherly affection. It says, the whole world lieth where? In wickedness. This is the truth that many people have refused to accept. This world we live in, is surrounded by wickedness. And tonight, briefly, we'll examine the mystery of wickedness. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. To let us know that there is an operation of wickedness that is present in the earth. And because we live here today and now, and we plan to live here for a very long time. It's important to understand the realities that are here and how to exempt ourselves. 
Ephesians 6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Against, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Finally, against spiritual wickedness. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Some versions say in heavenly places. The heavenlies. I told you that there are many planes of heavens. Is that true? Remember our teaching? The reality of what? Heaven and hell. Get the teaching. I told us that there are many dimensions in the realm of the spirit. Many. When you say the heavenlies, you are not necessarily talking about the heaven of heavens. Where God dwells or the third heaven. There are many planes in the spirit and the Bible generally calls it heavens. Are you getting my point? And I told us that this is where some people have gone to and come back and say they went to heaven. They went to astral realms. They went to different kinds of realms. Hallelujah. The Bible says that there are entities that are called spiritual wickedness. It's even a name. Spiritual wickedness and they dwell in the heavenlies. They operate from that plane. Hallelujah. So the whole world lieth in wickedness. How come we are not taught that this world we live in from the moment you are born, you are born into a system that is fabricated and doggedly into wickedness. And until you exit this realm, you are going to live with the reality of this predicament. So, knowing how to exempt yourself and your loved ones and exempt all that are around you is the reason why we are taking this topic. Are you getting my point? You are not going to stop the world from being wicked. Are you getting my point? Because the Bible calls Satan the God of this world. The God of this system. The one who fashioned a system that does not honor the values of the kingdom. Someday, Every knee will bow experientially. Is that true? And every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. But as at now, we do not yet see all things. Remember our teaching last week? We do not yet see all things. That's the reason why there are a brother who was saying armed robbers came and wanted to injure him. Think about it. Why will somebody sit down in the night? While you woke up in the morning, he was thinking, I'm going to wound somebody this night. How can a man think this is his goal for the day? I must wound somebody this night. It's called the mystery of wickedness. How many of you say, oh, why are they treating us bad? Who did I offend in my village that they want to stop me from marrying? Welcome to the reality of this world. You, you don't, Dr. Paul and Encher says, this this. The earth realm is not a playing ground. He said it's a battlefield. Whether you believe it or not, as you grow, the realities that will confront you will make you to reconsider whether it is a joke or it is true that wickedness is real. Many preachers, listen to me, many preachers in a bid to magnify God and demagnify Satan have, while that is a good intention, they have lied to people. Are you getting me? Lied to people that uh, there is the concept of wickedness. It does not exist. Please get this once and for all. Wickedness is real. Are you getting me? Somebody just gets up and looks at you and says, Benga, I don't like you. Why? I, I choose to hate you. And my life goal is to prove to you that I hate you. You buy a nice car and take it home. Somebody just begins to frown. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Car. How old is this boy? 25, 25. I was 40 when I bought a bicycle. And because of that, listen, listen, listen. Many of us grew up in the cities. We grew up around. We watched all kinds of of, of deceitful films that have covered us from the reality of the fact that wickedness is real. A number of us here are not working. But for those who are working, you know that when you get a job, 
For one single space of promotion, there may be a number of people. And everybody is eyeing every other person. Is that true? The day your director calls you, they call you and say, so what did he say? The next day you come back and your director says, don't be stupid. Me, I spoke to you. Something happened somewhere that you are not aware of. But you are paying a bitter price. Those who understand that wickedness is real and have equipped themselves with the revelation and the spiritual arsenals will keep soaring as if Satan does not exist. And they will leave others crying and languishing. There are many of our loved ones who don't go home. Some of you have not even gone home since you were born. Because they told you one scary story. They say nobody goes there and comes back the same. Hallelujah. The weapons of our warfare. Occultism is real. Witchcraft is real. Yokes are real. Bondages are real. Even Jesus said he was sent to deliver those who have been locked up in prison. They didn't see the prison physically, but they are in prison. Moving, but in prison. Hallelujah. This is what is affecting a lot of families. A lot of families. And I prophesy to you that in the name that is above all names, as we are teaching, just as the teaching is going on, many of you will suddenly find out that liberty, you are just liberated from this nonsense that the devil wants to tie you with. The strength of evil is ignorance. The strength of evil is ignorance. That's the highest weapon Satan uses against the people of God. Ignorance. The Bible says in Psalm 82, it said, They know not, neither do they understand. They know not. And then a few of us have gone a step further to know the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And it's not producing any result at all. So we are going to be examining these things. Praise the Lord. So wickedness is real. What is the goal of wickedness? Why wickedness? What is the goal of the evil that we see in our society? What does Satan want to achieve with armed robbers and terrorists and wicked people in the villages and around witches and wizards, necromancers, people who try to project wickedness to people's lives? What is the goal? We must know where Satan is going. Why is he doing this? Hallelujah. What is the whole idea behind the, set, the, the devil trying to turn the heart of your father against you or your mother against you or your loved ones or your employer or your boss or your pastor, whatever? Why does Satan enjoy wickedness? What does it do to him? Hallelujah. Wickedness or evil generally is brought to attempt to achieve three things. Number one, to discredit God. To discredit God in your life. To discredit God. If there is anything Satan is obsessed about, it's bringing you to a point where the credibility of God drops to zero in your life. How many of you have had people say, I used to trust God, but right now, I trust anything that works. God or others. Have you heard people speak like that? They say, I remember, I trusted God. From 17 years till 40 years. God didn't bring a husband. Right now, I trust any other thing. Whether a stick, a candle, fire, once it produces result, I trust it. That's exactly the goal of wickedness. When armed robbers attack you and you are shouting Jesus, Jesus, and they still injure you and they wound you, when certain things happen, they attempt to discredit God, discredit the word. Never forget this. The mystery of wickedness was put in place by Satan first in an attempt to prove 
that God is not as great as we claim He is. So, when a man has been victimized so much, that, that, that pain becomes a stronghold in his mind. How many of you have seen people that when you are praying, their eyes are even open, they are just looking at you, saying, in Jesus' name, Amen. While you are praying, they feel like slapping you. Once you just round up the prayer, they just move. You know they didn't believe this at all. The mystery of wickedness at work in their lives. Hallelujah. Are you getting my point? When you tell your parents, Oh, I'm attending Koinonia. God is doing great things. And then the devil orchestrates something terrible to happen. Are you getting me? Your father has an accident or something like that. And he returns back and you say, Daddy, I just wanted you to know that I dropped your name in the prayer request. He will give you a dirty slap and say, you and all the liars. and Every man of God is a liar. The mystery of wickedness. Number one, to discredit God. Do you not see that that was exactly what Lucifer tried to do in the Garden of Eden? He came and met Eve. Read his conversation with Eve. He said... Did God really say if you eat of this fruit, you will die? Now, you know that he used half truth, right? It was not, he just patched it up. He said, but do you know that there is a story you do not know? And that's why, that's what you will know when you eat of this fruit. And truly, when they ate of the tree, the eye, their eyes were open and they began to have a sense of the knowledge of good and evil. So, number one, to discredit God. Number two, number two, to weaken and possibly destroy your faith in God. To weaken and destroy your faith in God. The Bible says, be not weak in faith. Speaking about Abraham now. Be not weak in faith. The Bible says, he considered not. So, wickedness is orchestrated by Satan. Listen, please. Wickedness is orchestrated by Satan to weaken your faith. When you really see wickedness, you will need to trust God to stand. That's what philosophers are using. Why can a loving God allow children to be dying in Sudan? Is that not what people say? How can a loving God allow this and that to happen? And it weakens your faith. This is why Jesus says, If the Son of Man returns, will he find faith in the earth? Hallelujah. Are you getting my point? Especially for many of us who have been taught that when things go wrong in your life, it's a sign that something is wrong with you. It's a sign that something is wrong. Satan capitalizes on the inconsistency of that message. And when anything happens, you just believe that this trust you've been having in God. This is why Job said, though he slay me, Satan, you won't achieve what you are trying to achieve. Though he slay, Are you seeing now? Job's wife came to a point where she was tired. She said, Job, Neo, I don't think God is faithful again. Curse God and die. When your wife tells you to curse God and die, that's a level of discouragement because she's supposed to be the last person that will stand by you. Are you getting my point now? So to discredit God, to discredit God, number two, to weaken or totally destroy your faith. Number three, what's the goal of the mystery of wickedness? To perpetuate, listen please, very important, to, I'm thinking of the best way to put it, to, to become a channel through which the program and the evil agenda of Satan for nations will continue. Let me explain what I mean. How many of you have heard that word, covenant? Why will the devil want our forefathers huh, to go and bow to him 
and enter a covenant on behalf of people yet unborn. What, what, is, what is his passion about people that are not born yet? Are you getting what I'm, I'm trying to explain now? Because Satan is trying to secure a channel through which he can pass a transgenerational channel. Do you understand what I'm teaching you now? Are you getting my point? So although it will take 30 or 50 or 100 years for this generation to be born, Satan will say, you, since you are representing them, and I'm going to explain this to you. I will explain to you, I hope, if I can remember, the mystery of reproduction. And you understand that reproduction is not just about sex and giving birth. The Bible says by one man, not one woman, sin was transferred. Are you getting me? By one man, through the blood. Praise the Lord. So, he now enters a covenant and says, Alright, in this family, we will worship you, give us children. We will worship you, give us protection. Deal. Is that true? Now, he can go and give birth to 30 children. No CS with his wife. No CS, no hospital. But there will not be any complication because a pact had been entered. Are you getting my point? Fast forward two or three generations, somebody comes up and says, I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm not going to involve myself with all of these things. Because, you see, I'm going to talk about the mystery of blood. Blood does not have time. It speaks. It will raise an alert in the realm of the spirit. Something is being compromised here. And the next thing that will happen is that these people, because they are trying to breach a contract. Are you getting me? So it will activate the mystery of wickedness. The devil will now come to say, who is trying to stop this? And if you have authority enough, you will be the one who will break that cycle and enact a new one. Are you getting me? And if you do not sustain enough knowledge, you will die. And then the devil will say, this is a, an example of what I can do with anybody who plays with me. And the other person will say, I'm willing. Are you getting my point now? I don't know how you are going to write the third point, but that's what, I, that's what the third point is. Praise the Lord to become a channel through which transgenerational wickedness will be perpetuated. God bless you. Sir. The mystery of wickedness. Look up. How many of you know that if there are no human beings in the earth, wickedness will be unfruitful. It won't yield any result. Is that true? When you understand this, you will know that wickedness will not cease. In fact, the Bible says it this way. The Bible says, um, how did he put it now? It says, ah, end time, Matthew 24, how did he put it? How that people will be offended, is that true? Paraphrasing, like wickedness will increase. The imaginations that are in the hearts of men will increase. Look at me. Those who are praying, listen, and I want you to get this. Those who want to solve their family problems by just saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, wickedness will not happen to me. When I finish with you, you will know that there are certain things that if you do not do, that prayer is incomplete. Because there is already a seed, like a gene. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you believe what I'm teaching? I know this is wrestling a lot of our theology. Oh, I'm in Christ. Calm down. We're, 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 we're heading somewhere. Because many of us have been cheated. Oh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. I will show you that your personal salvation does not change your territory. Are you getting my point? That I am born again does not automatically make my mother, brother, sister, and father born again. If that were the case, everybody would just kneel down on behalf of their clan and just accept Jesus once and for all and let's rest from this nonsense. Hallelujah. Is that true? So wickedness is real. 
and the goal is to discredit God, to weaken your faith. Every single arsenal that Satan launches at the believer is aimed at discrediting the faithfulness of God. Because he has a name and he is called faithful and true. That means he does not lie. That means he cannot lie. That means he is ever, he's, 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 um, ever faithful through all generations. But when things begin to happen in your life, that negate what the word of God is saying. That's Satan attempting to discredit God in your life. Say amen. The mystery of wickedness. Wickedness is real, brothers and sisters. This operation is working in our government. This operation is working in our families. Look at me. Look at me. How many of you have heard the stories of parents... Who will put something in hot iron and carry it and press it on their children? Is that called discipline? That is the mystery of wickedness. Hallelujah. Or a mother look at her own daughter and say, I curse you. You won't marry, you won't move forward. This is a, it's a spirit. It's not just an attitude. Are you getting what I'm saying, please? And if we do not understand this and deal with this, it will limit us in a very mighty way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for opening our eyes. So the whole world lies in wickedness. The whole world, your village, your house, the job you are trying to look for, that office is in the midst of wickedness. You may be born again, but are your fellow employees born again? Hallelujah. And you are going to have to live with them. You do business with wicked people. You go to buy rice and buy gari from somebody who went to a herbalist. You bought it, you ate. Is that true? So you're not going to say, me, I'll only work with Christians. Ah, it's impossible. You live in a world where everyone is permitted to believe what he wants to believe. And because of our interrelations, you must find yourself relating with people. So you must know how to keep Satan where he belongs. Praise the Lord. Are you following me so far? Hallelujah. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the realms and jurisdiction, the boundaries of demonic operation. I won't stay too long in this aspect because I guess that this is the part that has brought fear and confusion and this is one of the most unscriptural areas of spiritual warfare in terms of its explanation. This is where you have people um, write accounts in an attempt to show us the structure and the organogram. Are you following me now? I know that there are many books, hundreds and probably thousands and even millions on books of books on spiritual warfare, deliverance, and so on and so forth. And there are many opinions. Are you getting me? The Bible tells us something very interesting. It said, do not be ignorant of the devices. I told you the word devices is the word stratomai, his strategies. So we are just concerned about his strategies. We are not necessarily concerned about the kingdom and what the organogram of the satanic kingdom is. Are you getting my point? I personally believe that an extensive study into the organogram and the structure of Satan it's not really necessary. Especially in light of the fact that we know that in Christ he has been defeated. Are you following what I'm saying? So I'm just guiding us just to bring awareness. There are many books and I've read some of them. You have read some of them. Hallelujah. They begin to tell you all kinds of things. They list physical territories in the earth. Where there are headquarters of demonic activities and so on and so forth. Now I'm not... I do not have enough authority to dispute the things that are being written. Are you getting my point? Especially for those that do not compromise the written word of God. Some of these things were written by people who allegedly said they were part of the demonic kingdom. And for some of them, they were deep into occultism. There are lots of books, Occult Grandmaster, Now in Christ. There are books by Rebecca Brown, Mary Baxter... Um, Dr. Olukoya, 
who is considered to be an authority in the subject of deliverance and spiritual warfare. There are a lot of others, you know, different brothers, prophets, people, and so on and so forth who have written books. Others went to heaven, others went to hell, others died and came back, others just studied the Bible. So we have this extensive um, description level 111, level 999, level 666, level, you know, this and that and that. And for many people, we have, rather than concentrating on the strategies, the methods of Satan, and understanding our victory, we have paid attention trying to study and research on the organization of the demonic kingdom. Let me tell you something. If you do that, the danger is that everything will suddenly become demonic around you. Have you seen people like that? Why are you looking at me like this? They just say, Kai, this lady, you are... because of something they read, they say, okay, in our kingdom, when we want to seduce a man, we look at him like this. So a lady is quietly, she's even feeling sleepy and just looking at you. you just say, Kai, in Jesus' name, don't, blood of Jesus, you are putting sign of the cross. So, we don't want to see this kind of immaturity in the body of Christ. That's why there must be a balance. Are you following me? There are people who don't wear black on Friday or on Sunday because they read a book and they say, every time you wear black on Friday, notice, check left, you will see a star. That's a sign that we are coming out. You know, and all kinds of sects come up with... Now, I hope you understand that I'm not condemning anybody. You get my point? I'm only trying to explain to you that it is quite counterproductive to spend all of our time and energy trying to understand the entire organization listen how many ceos maintain the same structures they change so that you were delivered from occult in 1980 does not mean the organogram that used to exist still exists it is logical for any leader to be dynamic are you getting my point so when you come and say okay there is a demon. His name is Luke. He's the one in charge of Zaria. He's the one appointed to stop Koinonia. His name is Luke. What if Luke... What? What, what if Luke was promoted or demoted and they now brought another person and you are still advocating and you say, Luke, I'm speaking to you now. You are hearing my voice. Luke is somewhere saying, me, I'm not even in Nigeria again. And now you're shouting. You see, there is a lot of spiritual ignorance. A lot of it. And most of this has come because we have uh, not necessarily gone out of scripture, but taken other materials and used them as the ultimate template to help us understand the realm of the spirit. I think sufficient enough is the information the Bible gave us about Satan. I believe it is sufficient enough. Praise God. You get my point? If you were in the occult before and you were delivered and you wrote a book, please don't feel sad. If you wrote prayer point that your book should increase, it will increase. We pray for you. Hallelujah. But at the same time, don't go about sitting down teaching people and saying, okay, in the realm of the spirit, red means danger. White means this. Yellow means this. So don't wear yellow shirts. If you really mean business with prosperity, keep yellow shirts aside. This is part of the teaching that has moved from church to church and place to place. So we have brought religiosity and a lot of forms of religion in an attempt to keep Satan. There is nowhere in scripture, listen, or you say, ah, don't take products from Procter and Gamble. They are Freemason and all of that. What do they make? How many of you have used their inhaler? You force it in your nose and you and did you go to hell? Did demons come to disturb you? You see, I'm saying this thing because we are touching on this topic and I'm trying to clear the air. There are many of you who say, I know somebody is a bad person. He sells meat. Me, I know this guy goes to the harbor. He won't eat his meat. Question. The one you have been eating before, who told you that that meat was not taken to a harbor? Are you getting my point? 
rather than allowing share put religious rules why don't you rise up in revelation and realize that the bible says a thousand shall come by your side only god knows how many poisons i've eaten in my life because the bible says when they serve you just give thanks and eat hallelujah many of us don't eat certain people's food just said this lady is always frowning at. i won't eat her food though i don't know what i've entered right now and then many of us listen i have had other teachings aha let me even talk about it i've had other teachings that say somebody can come to you come he can just come and hug you and he has initiated you listen let me balance something very quick it, it, was that how you got born again you think listen i want you to understand that the will of man is a powerful force even jesus stood at the door of the heart and was knocking until man agreed to open are you getting my point if you are not in christ or you are ignorant of the principles of the kingdom it is possible are you getting my point but to now come and say oh because i'm just sitting down and you came to put with one on my head suddenly i've been initiated except you don't carry fire the witch doctor together with his fire it will burn into ashes there there was a time people were complaining that a particular woman in Joss, she was doing some kinds of funny things and then getting power to make people come and eat her food you know how many people ate that food When they told me the restaurant, I laughed. I said, oh Lord, I don't know whether I'm eating here or not, but it cannot have power over me. Unto thee, O oh Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O oh Lord, do I lift, lift up, up my, my soul. soul. Oh my oh God. God. I, I trust, trust in thee. thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. I pity the person that will go to a coven and call my name. That's the last time you have the opportunity to shout it. Believe me. See, I'm rushing myself because let me see if we can get to weapons of victory except you don't know the spiritual arsenals you carry let me tell you satan can bow this is the sweetest part of this gist that's why i want to rush all these things so that we'll get there say after me satan can bow i hate the way satan has been so magnified there are many people who teach they say do you know that these classes of demons are so powerful not even you can stand them there are people who believe that I don't believe that. Absolutely. I don't believe it. The Bible says, God gave him a name that is above every other name. He said at the mention of that name, every knee, not some, every knee must bow. Hallelujah. Let's rush. So, jurisdiction, number one. Number one. The realm of the spirit territories of operation or realms of operation number one the bible says that they operate in heavenly places so that is a realm of demonic operation please write quickly can you put strings hallelujah wickedness now these are the territories that exert it upon government remember that the Bible says, there's no time to show you this. The Bible says when Daniel was praying, remember the story? The Bible says that principality that was operating over the territory of Persia, the prince of Persia, which stood 
the prayers of Daniel. Is that true? When Gabriel was going to bring him the answer, he said, when, he, when Gabriel arrived, he said, from the very first day that you set yourself to pray, your prayers were heard, okay? And while he was coming, the prince of that territory. So there are powers that station themselves across territories. That's why you can see that certain geographical territories exhibit similarities of certain character. Is that true? You find out that certain people, certain territories, the men are irresponsible. Certain territories, you know, they, they, are, they are given to anger. Certain territories, they are given to irresponsibility and all kinds of things. You find out that it's a common trait because of this operations of darkness in the heavenlies second is the air please take notes this is very important notice that it is the features that the holy spirit uses to manifest himself that satan also operates there the air the bible talks of the prince of the power of the air these spiritual forces of wickedness are the ones who manipulate and control people because the media is through the power of the air are you getting my point now they are they are the ones who initiate mind control systems and this is probably one of the most disastrous manifestation of darkness deception and ignorance are you learning something now so the air the prince of the power of the air Second scriptural proof that the air is one jurisdiction of operation. Remember when Jesus was going to meet the madman in Gadara. What happened? The Bible says suddenly the winds and the waves became boisterous. But Jesus looked and he knew that this was not just about wind. This was not just about the storm. Look at the tsunami that happens. Is it not wind? Wind. These are spirits. It's just that we cannot see it with our optical eyes. They are spirits. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? So the air. Number three, water. Water. This is very important. This is where we talk about the marine world or marine spirits. This is the jurisdiction of darkness that is responsible for prosperity, for lust, for seduction, and all kinds of perversion. Every kind of immoral perversion. Is associated with this dimension of demonic operation. Water. Very important. Are you learning something tonight? Water. And this one is very important. That's why you find out that territories that are covered around the riverine areas exhibit attitudes of lust. Are you getting me? Loss, unfaithfulness in marriage and all kinds of... You see it rampant. Are you getting my point? This is spiritual intelligence. I will give you sufficient to the point that you need that I believe you can research more. But I think that explaining to you what I'm explaining to you is giving you intelligence. So that when you are talking with people, it's like a doctor diagnosing a patient. With this spiritual intelligence, you will understand. You will know how to act. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There was a time, I remember at the Bar Beach, it was, it was a popular issue that uh, I think a particular bank or organization built a glass house. Is that true? They built a glass house and the witches and wizards around the marine, they wrote a letter to them. They said, you better do something about those buildings before we scatter it. You are interrupting us. Water. Very important. Very important. Job began to talk of the deep sea creatures. He called it Leviathan. The deep sea creatures that arise from the water. You read the book of Revelations and it tells you, you see the interaction of water and all of these things. So I've told you the realm of the spirit, the air, the atmosphere. The water. This water one is very serious. Do you know something? I will show you from scripture something that may surprise you. Do you know everything you see in existence, the animals and the rest, do you know they came out of water? They came out of water. Genesis, let me show you very quickly. 
There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They'll break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Help me search for it. Genesis 2. Verse what? 21? Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Good Bible students. Verse 20 and 21, Genesis 1. Are you there? I just want to show you that the water is a very mysterious object. And God said, let the waters do what? Bring forth abundantly. So there is a mystery of abundance and water. Are you understanding me? Is it in your Bible? He said, let the waters bring forth abundantly. The moving creature that have life. Where did they come out from? He said, and the fowl that may fly. Even the fowl came out of the water. It's in your Bible. Above the earth, in the open firmament of the heaven, verse 21. And God created great sea monsters. And every living creature that moveth, which the waters poured forth abundantly. Are you seeing now? Is it in your Bible? The water. Very, very important. This is why Satan associates himself a lot and there are many demonic, diabolic things that happen with water. Hallelujah. The next medium of manifestation is fire. Notice that these are the same expressions of the spirit fire almost everyone here of most of our villages have festivals there is no festival without fire how many of you have seen diabolic people put fire and keep putting it around them what are they trying to achieve it is a realm of operation of demonic substances see let me tell you something fire is a big mystery Big mystery. You can't hold it. It doesn't share anything, but it consumes everything that come ar comes around it. Hallelujah. Fire. Very important. Even the world will be judged with fire. The first judgment was with water. The second judgment will be with fire. Hallelujah. Number what now? Four? Number what? Five. I'm going to give it to you now. The fifth one is the earth. Dust. Earth. Adam. Hmm. Look at me. How many of you have seen people in your village get angry and they carried sand and spoke to it and dropped it back? Or like the evil people do when they take small drink, they pour small on the ground and say to our ancestors, What is it about the earth? The prophet looked and said, O earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. That means the earth is not non-living like we teach in biology. It was in the days of Moses. The Bible says the people rebelled against God and the earth opened its mouth. It has mouth. It swallowed them. Till tomorrow we cannot find them. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? These are jurisdictions of operation. That's why priests and the rest put their shrines on the ground and then they sit down. Even if you give them one million, they won't go and build a luxurious house. That earth, 
they must associate themselves with the earth. Hallelujah. These levels, this medium, these realms of operation, every manifestation, every single medium of manifestation. Let me give you one more. Are you ready? Human beings, human vessels. As far as Satan is concerned, this is the best medium of manifestation. Why? Because every other thing I've listed does not have a will. They don't have willpower, as it were. Are you getting me? And they don't have souls. Only human beings have souls. Please, are you learning something? So Satan entered the madman. Remember? The madman in Gadara. Do you know that the entire spirits across those territories, they were resident in that man. He stayed in caves. He was alone. He caught himself. But the moment Jesus was coming, without any publicity, he came out and went to wait close to the water and was waiting for Jesus to arrive. Immediately Jesus arrived, he began to talk to him. He said, we know who you are. Have you come to destroy us before our time? What time? What time did Satan teach them? Let me tell you something about the powers of darkness that you must understand. When they say their time has not come, what that means is this. Listen. You cannot cease their operation from the earth, but you can cease their operation from your territory. Are you getting this? Please understand this. That's why we can't all sit down right now and say, Satan, leave the whole world. Go to Venus or Mars. Relocate there. After all, it's empty. Go and build a new kingdom. Leave us in peace. So says the apostles and the prophets. No, you can't do that. What you can do, even Jesus, while he was on earth, he didn't cast Satan out of everywhere. Wherever he met with him, he told him, Mr. Man, go. Listen, Jesus himself answered one request of demons. They said, please, cast us to the pigs. What did he say? In other words, he knew that as far as exiting this realm is concerned, they are not going to leave. What we can do, are you getting my point? So that there are certain prayers we will stop praying at once. Are you getting my point? Many people pray and what they mean by their prayer is to tell the devil, bye bye, pack your load and go. Let me not see you and don't even go. Have you had that prayer? I cast you into Gehenna. Have you had that kind of prayer? Don't come out again. Uh, is that really an accurate prayer? No, no, don't feel bad. Believe me. With the kind of prayerful people on earth, if that prayer were answerable by now, there would have been some clear air that shows that sufficient demons have gone down to Gehenna. Gehenna is called the place of the dead. Are you getting my point? Listen, he said resist the devil. There are people that pray all kinds of prayers. Oh, we cast you and we lock you up across a forest. Just stay there. Those kinds of prayers are not accurate prayers. Please, please listen. Don't be offended if you are used to praying those kinds of prayers. But I want you to know that we cannot cast Satan and demons out of the earth. We can only secure our territory. Are you getting my point? Because the Bible says Satan is like a roaring lion. He's like that. He moves to and fro. Praise the Lord. Say, I'm learning something. Water, wind, the atmosphere. I just want you to know that these are operations of darkness. Every time a native doctor or a herbalist wants to do certain things, one or more of these elements must be in place. Yet, these are the same elements that the Holy Spirit associates himself with. What does that tell you? Discrediting God. 
You see that? Thank you, Jesus. Let's touch on weapons of victory. I'll just use one and then we'll stop. Where? What's the time? Oh, there's time. Praise God. Don't look at the time. Look at me. The clock is not preaching to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, before we talk of the weapons of victory, let me just speak very quickly on the strategies of Satan. The strategies. The strategies. This is, I think this is the one that is very important. Strategies. There are three main strategies from Scripture. They will not change. This is the one you can bank on. They will not change. Do not be ignorant of the devil's stratomai, his strategy, his way of doing things. It can come in different forms, but it is one of these three. Number one, I shared it last week, ignorance. 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 Second Corinthians 4 verse 4. Ignorance. Are you there? Okay, I thought it was projected. Let me turn there. Second Corinthians 4 verse 4. In whom the God of this world. Okay. Second Corinthians 4. Not Chronicles, sorry. Second Corinthians. No problem, let's continue. In whom the God of this world or this age, the word age there is aeon. In whom the God of this system, the thinking pattern of this system, has blinded the minds of them who believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. Is that in your Bible? It says Satan did what? Blinded their minds. Everybody say ignorance. The number one, and hear me, as sophisticated as Satan looks, his greatest strategy is to maintain ignorance in the lives of believers or across territory. Say ignorance. Notice, every manifestation of wickedness in the earth realm has been strengthened by the ignorance of the people. Because the moment they know, they will revolt until victory comes. Every bad government in the world has been able to execute its agenda by enforcing ignorance. Are you getting that? That's the spirit of the power of darkness. Say ignorance. Ignorance. Now, Come. Any other guy again? Come. I need two gentlemen. Stand here, stand here. I want to explain something. Stand here, stand here. Now, please, everybody look at me. I want you to understand this and I pray you get this revelation in Jesus' name. There are two sides to the understanding of the kingdom. Please don't forget. There are what? Two sides. The first is understanding the person of Jesus Christ. The person of Jesus Christ. The second is the principles of Jesus Christ. And that's what we call the principles of the kingdom. Is that true? Are you following me please? So, the person of Jesus Christ, when you come under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, when you surrender to Jesus Christ, you have embraced His person. But that does not automatically mean that you have knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. Are you getting my point? The person of Jesus Christ secures your eternal destiny and secures your peace. The principles of Jesus Christ secure your victory in this earth realm. So there are many well-meaning believers who know the person of Jesus Christ in terms of their loyalty to him. But they lack sufficient understanding of kingdom principles. Are you getting my point? For instance, there are many well-meaning Christians who are poor and broke and they may remain like that forever. And they believe that 
just by being close to Jesus Christ, automatically prosperity comes. No, there, there is a kingdom principle that governs it. Is that true? There are many people, although they are close to God, many people hate them because the kingdom principle for access is honor. Are you getting my point now? So, whether you are a Christian or not, when you dishonor people, you will never have access. Are you getting my point? So, there is ignorance. What Satan tries to do is to take this first level of ignorance to stop you from seeing the light of the gospel to come to Jesus Christ in the first place. But if he does not succeed and by any means you surrender your heart to Jesus Christ, this becomes the second phase of the ignorance. He stops you. Are you getting my point now? So there are many well-meaning Christians who the devil has lost it on them as far as the person of Jesus is concerned. But he has shielded them from understanding the principles of the kingdom. That's why when somebody gets born again, the next mission is to subject him under a radical teaching ministry where the principles of the kingdom will be taught and then he will understand. This is what spiritual growth is about. Growing in intimacy. This is why we call koinonia intimacy and partnership. Intimacy is our knowledge as we progress deeper to know God. Partnership is our working with the word and with the spirit. Are you getting my point now? Do you understand this, this explanation I've given you? Because the greatest tool that Satan uses his number one strategy is what? Ignorance. So, an unbeliever comes. How many of you have seen a lot of unbelievers who understand Bible verses? They understand a lot of Bible verses. You say something, they ask you, they say, okay, let's turn to the book of Matthew. I have this and that. And the next thing, they will not accept the simplicity of the gospel. Are you getting me to surrender to Jesus Christ? Then, when... They eventually surrender. The devil makes them feel that there is nothing more in the kingdom. So they remain in church and they think remaining in church is equal to spiritual growth. So eventually they tell you, I've been here 20 years. And based on that, there is nothing you will tell me. Ignorance of the principles. Are you getting my point? This is the deliverance that is happening to some of you right now. Because you are born again. But you don't know why things are not moving the way the word says should be. Could it be that you do not yet have the comprehension? Paul himself prayed in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 to the Ephesian church who were already born again. He said, for this cause, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant unto you the spirit of what? Wisdom. An understanding or revelation. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, flooded with light, that ye may know. So the Bible tells us that according as his divine power has given us what? All things. But those all things are encapsulated in knowledge. When you have access to the principles, the door opens up to you at once. That's why all things are not possible for everybody. What is possible for me, although we are all equal in Christ, but our comprehension of kingdom principles have created the divide. So I can speak to a demon spirit and say, go, and he will go. Not because my born again is greater than your own, but my, I have a greater comprehension. Two students in the same class, taught by the same teacher, one gets 100, one gets 50. Are you seeing that now? It is the degree of their comprehension. It is because of that that some will be a 30-fold, some will be a 60-fold, and some will be a what? They all produced. But according, the Bible says those who were on good soil were the ones who had and understood. But the difference was their degree of understanding. Are you following me now? Say the person of Jesus. Say the principles of Jesus. Say the person of Jesus. Say the principles of the kingdom. The question I want to ask you is, how many principles of the kingdom do you know? This is the measure. See, listen. Listen, this is very important. 
Healing, for instance, healing comes from the body of Jesus. By his stripes, we are healed. Are you seeing that? Favor does not just happen automatically. So, when you understand the laws of the Spirit, then you will know how to navigate through life. So, whenever you, f- you see a roadblock, you go back and search out diligently what kingdom principle is responsible for the result you are looking for. Because if God did it, then it is possible. It is only the light that will open the door. So, arise and shine. Not because you want to arise. Your light, access. When that revelation comes and you understand it, the door is opened at once. If you understand what I'm teaching right now, it's automatic. You don't need to pray about it. That's why, see, the Bible says while Jesus was teaching, the power of God was moving around, waiting for those who will understand and believe, so that at once it will be activated. While Peter yet spake these things, the Holy Ghost fell on them because they understood and they believed. Immediately. Are you getting the point now? So when the word of God returns to him, it's because he did not find a believer. Praise the Lord. Are you getting me? Bless you. Bless you. Weapons of victory. Let me just take one. The name of Jesus. Hmm. I will share a revelation about the name. There are many weapons of victory. Maybe let me just run through a few of them. The name of Jesus. The mystery of the blood of Jesus. Listen. The power of praise. The power of a seed. I'm going to teach you the weapon, spiritual arsenals that will lock the hands of Satan at once. The power of prayer. Hallelujah. The power of unity. The power of love. All of these are dangerous spiritual weapons that will keep Satan where he belongs. Is this teaching benefiting you? Are you getting something? So I'll just take on one of them. The power of the name of Jesus. We'll sing that song, There is Power. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. We'll sing that song one more time. To the shame of the devil. And then we'll just pray. Just pray in tongues for a minute or two and then you sit down. I'm about to give you a revelation that will set you on fire. Shabakata labaka presekete baladadada. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Sing it one more time. Break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. Can you stretch in tongues for just one minute? Sakata fakata preketa. Ambrosote kata baladabaka. Shapata la baka. Ambrosote kata baka. Shapata. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. 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 
power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Break power. Come, come, break the 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 power. Come, Please be seated. God bless you. Take your Bibles. Let me have your attention. Lord, let our eyes be open. Show us something powerful. Let me tell you something. There are many of you, if you catch this revelation tonight, you will be amazed. This name will work for you. Years ago, I called this name, oh, nothing happened. I shouted Jesus. I said it like a special number. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Open our eyes, oh God. I show you a mystery right now. Mark 16. Break every chain. There are some chains that need to be broken. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Verse 15. Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Take my value system to every creature. He said, He that believe and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believe, believe not shall be damned. 17. If you are a believer, please read it. One, two, read. It's projected. Stop. Stop. This sign shall follow them that believe. They will do certain things when they have a revelation of my name. He said, in my name, they will do what? It tells you all the things that can be possible in the name. In my name, they shall, number one. Number two. Number three. They shall take up what? Hold on. What is the meaning of that? What is they shall take up serpents? What is the meaning of they shall take up serpents? I will soon explain it to you. Because Jesus told Moses, I mean God told Moses, remember, He said, take the serpent from the tail. I will show you what that means. They shall take up serpents. It doesn't just mean carry a physical snake. Remember at the burning bush, when Moses met with God, I, you remember... Are you getting my point? He threw the rod. Is that not true? And he told him to take it, to hold it by the tail. Is it not in your Bible? I will show you what that means. To take up serpents. It's a revelation. It's a revelation. I will show you a scripture that says the horn in a man's body is on his hands. A horn is a symbol of power. Are you getting my point? So he said with that horn, you will take up serpents. It's a mystery. I will explain. He said, in my name, that will happen. He said, and if they drink any deadly thing, that means if they move in my name, no poison will harm them. So long as it is in my name. He said, they shall lay hands. I will show you the mystery of the laying on of hands. It's not just about touching people. The horn in a man's body is his hand. The apostle said that you will stretch forth your mighty hands. The right hand of God, the Bible says, is the hand of power. Not his right leg. He said they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Listen, I want to explain to you the mystery of the name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, if I call you, come. Benga. The first revelation of the name of a man is it invites his presence. When you invoke the name of a man, his presence is encapsulated in his name. Are you seeing this? I called his name and what happened? His presence showed up. So the Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming their words with signs. It happened because a personality was answering to his name. So they went in the name. This is what it means to come in the name of the Lord. To come with the backing, the presence of God. Weep 
weapons of victory that can kick any satanic arsenal out of your life. Hallelujah. Watch this. I called his name. And he confirmed that that name is true. The name of a man is his identity. Every time, see, listen, listen. That's why when God met certain people, he changed their names. Because the name of a man represents the prophecy of his life. It represents his ability. It represents the prophecy upon his life. When he met Jacob, he said, no, you are not a cheat and a supplanter. As a prince with God, you have fought and prevailed. I change your name to Israel. And the prophecy started following him. The mother of Jabez bore him in sorrow. And all through his life, the name was following him. Name follows people. A name is a spirit. It's a presence. And Jabez said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Change my name. Hallelujah. Are you getting the revelation now? So the first revelation is that the name of Jesus compels his presence to show up in that scene. Listen. Now you understand what Paul was saying. Say not in your heart who will ascend to heaven and bring God or who will go to the deep. He said, but the word is near you, even in your mouth. That means when it is uttered with revelation, the presence shows up. No time, no distance. Are you getting my point? This is a very, very powerful revelation. Very powerful revelation. You must believe this. Let me demonstrate something. Take this, hold it. This is ordinary handkerchief. Who brought this handkerchief? Are you seeing this? This is an ordinary handkerchief. He's holding it, right? Give it back to me. Watch the power of the name. This is not just for jamboree. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. Hold this. Hold it. What is the difference? He just held this. Is it not so? He held this. He held this. You see the power of God there breaking out again. See, this is a revelation. This is why saying in Jesus' name is not what will bring the miracle. There is a revelation. This is what I want you to know. It will rattle from the realm of the spirit and it will affect you in this realm. This is a handkerchief he held. That's why I did it in your presence. It's the name. Say not in your heart who will go and bring him from heaven. He is closer to you. This is what koinonia is about. The reality of a personality that can be demonstrated here and now. Paul said we do not teach cunningly devised fables. These are not just stories that cannot be proven. Unbelief. So you can be, listen, you can say Jesus, Jesus, nothing will happen. The next thing I want you to know is, what is really this name? Let's examine it. What is the name? We have said what the name can do, but what is the name? Look up, please. I want to shock you. Listen. The name is not Jesus. You see where people have been missing it? This is a hospital. There's surgery going on right now. The name is not Jesus. He said, in my name. He didn't write the name there. He just said, if you can find what that name is. What is the name? The name is not J-E-S-U-S. Listen. The Bible says, Isaiah speaking. He said, you shall bear a son. They shall call him what? Emmanuel. Did they ever call Jesus Emmanuel? But the prophet said, that will be his name. The name was a revelation that God is with us. Is that true? He said they shall call him Emmanuel. Nobody ever called Jesus Emmanuel. Jesus was a name that was given to him in the earth realm. There are Mexicans that bear Jesus today. In fact, in Hebrew tongue and Aramaic, it's not Jesus. It's Jesus. That's what they call it. So it's not in the pronunciation. It's not in J-E-S-U-S. Before we pray, 
tonight, once and for all, I want to reveal to you what this name is. Talabana makoso talabai. Rende gabaka sataya. In my name, kaya. Sata kabarata. Makapakata. Keke takadeka. Seka pata beka. Mambros kope kataliya baba baba baba. Seke pros kabariata. Soko topa. Sopadiata. Empeketeka. Get this revelation tonight. Get this revelation tonight. Get it. And rise to a new level, a new dimension. You don't have to say it. You read here. You stand here. Listen. Listen. Look at me. Look at me. Listen. I want to explain something to you. Listen. Many of you think that it is an act of arrogance when I tell you all men are not equal. We are equal in Christ. But something has separated people. The Bible says there are some bodies terrestrial, some celestial. Not everybody you see is the same. It's not pride. This is why we are bringing us higher. I tell you the truth. You will shake hell. This is how you will live as if Satan does not exist. You are coming in the name. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2. Zeka kapata katabala dabakate basi. Zende brato shalamai. God doesn't care whether it's Koinonia or anywhere. Anywhere his name is mentioned, he shows up. He doesn't want to know whether you are playing or you are taking it serious. It's a law. When you invoke it, he shows up. Because every man answers his name. Only a dead man does not answer his name. Oh, I believe the Bible. There is an angel standing close to this lady. Breakthroughs are already happening. Deliverances are happening. Believe it. Deliverances are happening. I give the chains falling. Strongholds. I give the chains falling. I command every chain. Fall. I hear the, the chains chain falling. I command every chain fall. I hear the, the, the chain falling. I command every chain fall. I command every chain fall. I command every chain fall. I hear the chain falling. I hear the chain falling. Every sickness, go. Every infirmity, go. 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 Every yoke, every disease. I hear the chain. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at me. Let me show you something that will surprise you. Hallelujah. Sam, come. 
Watch this. Father, let the sounds rise in your name. Watch what will happen as he sings. Just raise any song and sing. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy life. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy life. Let hope rise. the same person that ministered the same person that see many of you do not understand the power in the name Jesus didn't lie to us believe me that name is powerful that name is powerful every demon and every spirit just the symbol in this place right now every foul devil at the count of three, I come in the name. Go, 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 go. Every spirit, every demon, every devil, I command you in the name. Go out, out. You will not return again. Go, go. He said in his name, we will cast out demons. I cast out demons now in that name. Go, go, go. Every problem you have come here with tonight, yeah. it leaves you here now. Yeah. Every problem you came here with, I yeah. don't care what it is. In the name, yeah. in the name, it will bow now. Yeah. Every problem, yeah. every problem, every yeah. challenge, health, yeah. finance. Please sit down if you can. We have to finish this. Please sit down. Sit down. Kadabala kata brondo soto la kosha. Sit down if you can. If they can't sit down, just leave them, please. We have to hurry up. I'm teaching you this because God is depending on you. The goal is not to watch a man of God do this. The goal is to show you
that this is a possibility here and now. Take that name. Go and dislodge powers in your house. Let the people of God know that your coming for koinonia is not just a religion. Without a demonstration of the kingdom, they will doubt you. Go and change the things they say cannot be changed. See, you don't need to care how it will happen. Just go in the name. Just go in the name. Philippians chapter 2. Let me reveal to you what that name is. That's why I told us to pray in tongues. Something special. Supernatural. About the name. Jesus. Something happens when I mention your name. Listen. God gave us power to solve problems. If you are not interested in solving problems, you will never get the power of the Holy Spirit. Solve problems. Philippians chapter 2. Let's hurry up. There are many weapons of victory but i'll talk on one philippians chapter 2 let's take it from verse 8 and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross verse 9 Wherefore, Kabbalataya, God had so highly exalted him. Stop. I taught us last week that until Jesus died and rose again, he was not yet exalted. Is that true? Listen, I want to surprise you. The name was not yet given to man officially until he was coronated. Are you getting me? Because as it were, when Jesus was on the earth, his name was limited. Why was it limited? Because he was a man. And he had not defeated death. So, the last enemy to be destroyed, death, still had power over him. Are you getting my point? This is the reason, listen please. This is the reason why when he sent the 70, he begged them not to go to certain places. Because the power would not work there. But when he resurrected, remember Mary wanted to touch him. And he said, no, don't touch me. You will corrupt a coronation that is about to take place. This is what the psalmist saw. And he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit down at my... That was the coronation service of Jesus. The moment that happened, he returned to earth. And he said, all hail. Now, all power has been given. Go therefore. No boundaries, no limitations. You just go anywhere it will work because a coronation had happened. Are you getting the point now? So, he begins to give us by revelation. Paul said, wherefore, God exalted him and gave him. That means before then it had not been given. He gave him a name. What is this name that we have been looking for? He said, which is above every other name. Verse 10. Whatever that name is, whenever that name of Jesus, he said, at the name of Jesus, the name is not Jesus. Every knee should bow at the name that was given to this person called Jesus. You get my point? Every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things in the earth and of things under the earth ready for the name let me show you 11 and every tongue should confess that that jesus christ has now received a name that is called lord that's the name that's the name that was given to him look at it that's the name lord psalm 24 quickly psalm 24 
Kabrinde Gesetele Makanya de Balaraba. Aya. Psalm 24, verse 1. Psalm 24, verse 1. Are you there? Everybody read one to go. Stop. Did he say the earth belongs to God? Do you know what Lord is? Lord means master. Lord means owner. Ma Lord means authorized legislator. Authorized. So the earth belongs to whoever will bear this name called Lord. The name was reserved. No one had taken the name yet. When Jesus defeated death, God said you now qualify. Take the name. So you now become the literal possessor of the earth. Are you getting me now? The earth is the Lord's. So the Bible says, if you want the name, here is the condition. The name is upon a mountain. But who shall ascend to that hill? And who shall stand in his holy place? This is the requirement. He that has clean hands and a pure heart. No man qualified to ascend that hill. But Jesus was as a man tempted like us, yet without sin. So he ascended the mountain. That's why the Bible says, before he led captivity captive, he first ascended, he descended. After that he ascended, he took the name and he came back and he entered a room without the door. And he said, all hail, all authority has been given to me. Listen, this is what Jesus said. Listen, he said, whoever believes in me, I will give the privilege to share my name. You get the point? That name, Lord, so just like me, he will become an authorized legislator. So in my name, he will cast out devils. So that it will not make any difference whether it was Jesus speaking physically or you or a handkerchief. Whatever comes in the name brings the presence of Jesus directly. That's why whether you speak English or Hausa or Greek, demons don't hear those things. They didn't speak English in Bible days. All you need to do is come in the name. So handkerchiefs and aprons were taken. Handkerchiefs and aprons. They contacted the name. Lord, it says, and the fullness thereof, the world, and all day that dwell therein. Listen. Listen, listen, listen please. The Lordship of Jesus is the revelation that when you come under, you have carried the name. It's not Jesus. It is a revelation that this man, God has made him both Lord and Christ. He's not just the anointed, but he has become the owner. Are you listening to me? So if I look at this sister for instance, I come in the name because she belongs to God. I have the authority to cast out whatever is molesting her because I come in the name. Are you getting the revelation? Hold on. Many people think it is J-E-S-U-S. -S. Do you know why we shout Jesus? We want unbelievers to know that the owner of that name is Jesus. Are you getting my point? When you tell demons, go, is go J-E-S-U-S, -S, is go L-O-R-D, they search in the spirit to see whether you have the revelation of that name. Once you have it, they will obey you. So after this night, you will go back home in the name. Many of you, you will go and look for what you left and say, where is it? And it will say, I left. Because the person who left was not the person who came back. You came in the name. Remember, there was a certain time even the disciples could not cast out devils from the epileptic patient because they did not have the name. They thought it was just Jesus doing a lot of things. Now, when they had the name, Peter was angry in Acts 3. He said, now it's my time to shine. He saw the man who was lame. And the Bible said, it says, silver and gold I don't have, but I have something. You can know you have something 
He said, this is what I have. In the name. You see that? That was his treasure. He said, this one, no man can take it from me. I may not have silver and gold, but I have something that can solve your problem. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up. The man was still looking at him. And Peter said, you don't know the power of the name I'm invoking. He held him. And the Bible says, he leaping, stood. Son of man, he said, can these dry bones live? He said, I don't know. He said, all right, now you prophesy. He said, I prophesy as I was commanded. That's the secret. When God gives you his name, he has authorized you to legislate on his behalf. As many as received him, he gave them power. The power is not falling and rolling on the floor. The power is the ability to share in his lordship. Hallelujah. This is what makes ordinary men to become something else. So that you see an ordinary man moving, but you don't try him when he calls on a government that is bigger than you. You see that? We are going to pray. I've been hearing that there are many people that molest people on their way home. We are going to pray. Let me tell you the truth. I pity the next person that would try to molest anybody here. It's the name. It's the name. Listen. Please, I want you to believe this. Believe this. Years ago, they stole my laptop. Thieves came to our house. We were all sleeping. They just carried the laptop and my brothers were running to chase them. And honestly, when I got up, I just had commotion and I was laughing. My own was not that I lost. That I was just laughing. I said, oh, God, I love you. If my laptop doesn't return, give me money to buy another one. And an angel appeared before me and he just did this. And that was the end of it. Seven hours later, the laptop was back on my table. Hallelujah. Some people from nowhere mobilized themselves and made up their mind to look for the thief. They went and caught him in prison. I was busy counseling. The name, see, the name of Jesus is powerful. Don't let secular humanism or the things that, you, that did not work for you before make you think it does not work. Are you getting me? You say, ah, but I use the name. I told you they stole my wallet. My, the wallet didn't come back. But that does not ever mean that the name is not powerful. This is the problem with a lot of people. We are too, our, our faith is too small. The moment something does not happen, we just conclude. This thing doesn't work. You think so? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me stop here. We'll continue next week. Rise up. I feel the spirit of prayer. Hold your hands together. Hold your hands and pray in the spirit. Just for five minutes. Please. All the instruments coming. Pray in tongues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very quickly, we'll take three prayer points. Number one, listen. Let me tell you why this name does not work for many people. There is a little secret in the Bible that many of us ignore. The secret to resisting the devil. The Bible says, submit to the mighty hand of God. Submit. Your degree of submission is your degree to which his authority will flow. Many of us have not yet submitted to the Lordship. You have given your heart to the Lord. That's true. But you have not come under His influence. Tonight, you are going to pray and say, Lord, I willingly submit to your authority, to your government. Pray.
pray and watch the wonder. Watch the wonder of what will begin to happen in your life. Inside and outside. Make sure you are praying. Lord, I submit to your governing influence. Lord, I submit to your mighty hand. I submit. I submit. Lord, I submit. Rabble, <laughs> I bossa tanna va cosa che nelle bregadia la bossa fatta la bregadia e non so tonna va cosa alleluia listen the centurion surprised Jesus Christ he gave Jesus a revelation that touched him the, Jesus said let's go to your house he said no you don't need to go for i am a man under authority I'm under the authority of the Roman government. And by reason of being under that authority, I tell one, go, and he will go. I'll tell the other, come. And Jesus said, what? I've not seen this kind of faith, this kind of revelation in Israel. Submit yourself to the mighty hand of God. Then resist the devil. Hallelujah. 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 In the next five minutes, I like you. I don't know how you are going to pray. Leave your hands. Praise God. I know we are men of prayer. Listen, you have been confronting darkness, but you try it now in the name. You you see the revelation. David met Goliath. He said, You come to me with your spears, but I come to you in a name. In a name, you come to me with bow and arrow. I mean, I may be small, but there is a name, an office. I invoke the power of an office. Hallelujah. Praise God. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. That's what the Lord is asking you tonight. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. What is it that he cannot do? Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. The God of wonders. That can change situations. That is too hard for me to do. I am there. Hallelujah. Now listen. The issues that have been affecting your life and your family in the next five minutes, tell it I confront you in the name that sickness in the name. Come on, prayer warriors. Come on, prayer warriors. Shake the take 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 the situation in my family is changing. Is changing. Is changing. I command breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I command breakthrough 
in the name of Jesus. I command healing. I command miracles. Angels. Command your marriage. Command your prayer life to come alive. Confront your unemployment issue. Confront your business. Confront your family. I come in the name. I come in the name. I come in the name. Set a dead Lord. The Lord rebuke you. 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 Let tongues, tongues, let miracles occur. Let testimonies occur. Lord, I release breakthrough. 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 In every family. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number two. Please listen. We are going to pray. And this night, you are going to say, I take my eyes away from every challenge. Whatever the devil has used to discredit God in my life. Are you hearing me? There are many of us that cannot trust God because of the things that have happened or the things that are happening. The Bible says, Abraham wavered not at his faith through unbelief. He considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb, although she was close to a hundred years. He counted him faithful. Faithful. God cannot lie. Satan can be tired. Your faith can weary the devil. Listen. Right now, I want you to lift up your voice and begin to prophesy and say, I take my eyes away. I don't care what is not working or what is working. God, you are faithful and your word must come to pass. You are not a man. Come on, lift your face. Lift your voice and pray. Provoke faith. I'm a believer. I believe the word. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the word will not fail. The word will not fail. Pray. Let me cry in my spirit. Oh, I believe God. I believe God. His promises are yea and amen. Pray. That sickness will leave. That oppression will leave. That failure will fall. The marriage will come. The child will come. The building will be completed. Your spiritual life will grow. Your prayer life will grow. The habit will die. The marriage will walk. Yes, Lord. We are men of faith. We are a faith filled generation. Koinonia is a place of faith. They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. Thou cannot be shaken, but abide forevermore. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and leave us on your own understanding. 
Hallelujah. Yes. I see a lot of testimonies coming. Mighty testimonies. Believe me, mighty testimonies. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The last prayer point. I'm led for us to do this. Hallelujah. You're going to hold hands with somebody. If you can pair yourselves into three, that will be excellent. You are going to pray for the finances of the people in that circle. Provoke the heavens to be open. The Lord in this month, if, if there are not enough people, just hold two or three, anybody. Come on, pray now. We command it. We command it. In the name of Jesus. Let there be testimonies, breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus, testimonies. Pray, it will happen. Pray, it will work. Pray. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Visit families, oh God. Visit your people in mighty ways. Visit your people in miraculous ways. Prophesy, Gentiles, come to your light, kings, to the brightness of thy rising. Your gates are continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. You will call on one person, and a nation will answer you. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Listen, brothers and sisters, you do not do good to your loved ones if you carry all this revelation and not work with it. It has nothing to do with MOG. It's about being an ambassador, an envoy of his presence. Now you know that you are not ordinary. It's not just the issue of confessing it. It is the truth. It is your present reality. No matter how weak you think you are, our job here is to make you become strong. The Bible says ordinary men came to the cave of Adullam and David made mighty men out of them. Hallelujah. You are not ordinary. There is an anointing upon you. There is an unction. Walk conscious of it. It should not create pride and arrogance. You are like a dove. But where you see the devil, you switch and you become a roaring lion. Listen, I'm giving you an assignment this week. Take on a project. Resist the devil everywhere you see him. Are you getting my point? If you look at yourself alone and all the revelations you have alone, you are small. Are you getting my point? But realize there is an authority. Every time you stand before situations, just know that I am small. But there is one who is mightier than I. This, is, this was a testimony of John the Baptist. There is one who is mightier than I. Invoke his presence to the scene and go to bed. When you go home, 
all those spirits that come to molest and press you, you tell them now, I sleep in the name. Come and press me. Yes. Absolutely. I told you my story. I was being oppressed by devils. Although a preacher, because I did not understand the revelation, the Bible says a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field. Hallelujah. I don't drive devils from me. When I caught the revelation, I went home and I shouted. I said, the spirits that oppress me, I invite you this night. They were officially invited. Until tomorrow, they have not come. Never. Look, realize this. Just as Father Abraham and the rich man, there was a gulf that divided them. Revelation is what will exalt you. Are you getting my point? Anything in your life that is not working, as little as anything, hallelujah, you find something growing in your hand that should not grow. Don't just laugh. See, the problem is many of us are not convicted enough. So you get ashamed once you go outside of this circle. You don't want to look like you are a spirit coco. That's the problem. So we can jump. There are many of us here that you behave as if you are convinced. But the sincere truth is if you walk out of here, you are ashamed of everything you were shouting and praying about. And when it takes, it, it comes to taking steps of faith. Even when your phone rings and it's a scripture, you answer it or off it quickly. Lest you be embarrassed. Do you think that God did not know what to do with his time? And he just brought men in the earth to deceive them. But I know whom I have believed. I'm persuaded. Any day, any time. On jeans, on trousers, on suit, I am persuaded. I would die believing this revelation. Hallelujah. Please be convinced. Listen, many of us in all sincerity, we don't spend time with the word of God. There are many of us after today now is until next Friday again before you open your Bible and start smiling. You see, ba, brothers and sisters, this thing you can't fake it. If you are not doing it genuinely, it will show. Are you getting my point? No, this is not one of the things you fake. You can't fake conviction. No, you can't fake conviction. You can play games with power. You can do a lot of things. But you cannot fake conviction. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to speak over your life. Please believe. It's part of the things that we do all the time. I wrote a post and I gave the media to put it on Facebook. I am not on Facebook, but once in a while as the Holy Spirit puts it in my heart. I write these prayers and they are not just to get activities. No. Hallelujah. It's our job to speak over your life. Listen, there is power in the blessing. Hallelujah. Many of you do not know to bless means to empower you to prosper, to rise from where you are. He said, blessed be Abraham son of the most high possessor of the heavens and earth and his destiny opened up please lift your hands i want to speak over your life hallelujah in the name of the lord jesus christ i bless you with the favor of god i declare over your life that you are well favored you are like a well watered garden. Whatever looks like mockery in your life, I cause it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over the works of your hands, I instruct them to prosper. I instruct them to prosper. 
whatever project you are having, I speak to it. Grow in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that is alive grows. Therefore, I command it to grow. I speak and I pray over your life. All the destiny help us that are required to take you and to lift your hand and to introduce you to those who will take you to the next level. I call them into your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that the name works for you. The same anointing you see in this house. Carry it and do wonders with it. Change destinies. Affect lives. Heal sick bodies. The same way the devil runs here. He will run in every area of your life. I speak over your life. Whoever you bless is blessed. Whoever you anoint is anointed. Whatever your hand touches, it prospers. I bless you above every curse. I bless you above every limitation. I prophesy, let Reuben live. Whatever is dead in your life, whether in your organs, in your system, whatever should be there and is not there, we create it now. 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 Whatever should not be in your body and is in your body at this moment as I speak, I command it to live now and never return again. I bless your finances. We are a prosperous people and I declare that prosperity follows you. You are blessed in your health. Your mind is blessed. In the name of Jesus, wisdom is at work in your life. You are men and women of character. You are men and women of power. You hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You are men of faith. You are women of faith. Return with amazing testimonies. Whoever has mocked at your God, I pray this night that may the God I serve, may He step in like a warrior in your life and surprise they that have mocked God in your life. Whoever has laughed at your Christianity, I pray, except it is not the God of heaven that wrote, that inspired the writing of this word, I pray right now, be lifted above your equals. May they see your lifting. You do not merit it, but let the grace of God take you. May the grace of God take you. I command the words of your mouth from today, may they carry power. You will solve problems with your mouth. As you speak it, you will see it. I prophesy, as you speak it, you will see it. The Bible says, and God said it, and he saw, and he said, and he saw. As you say, may you see it. Hallelujah. I agree with you right now. Whatever you have fasted and fasted and prayed about, in the name that is above all names, I introduce the faith of the Son of God in your situation. And I compel that mountain to fall now. That dagon that attempts to speak against your life, I come with the rod of a higher priesthood and I command that dagon, that devil, you bow now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And any man that wants to molest your life, whether as an armed robber, as wicked, see, listen, can I tell you something? I don't believe in killing people. But the prayer I'm about to pray is dangerous. I don't care who, right now, whoever is tying down your life and destiny. Hear me. This night, if I be a servant of God, 
I don't care who. The judgment of God this night locates that one and brings them to book. Now, now, I don't care who. In the mighty name of Jesus, whoever says you will not go, he will go for you now. Whoever says you will not leave, he will die for your sake. Whoever says you will not prosper, I curse their word. I curse their prophecy. I shared with you about the mystery of wickedness. Let me tell you, wickedness is real. Wickedness exists. I'm praying again this night. I, whoever has vowed that is not with his eyes, he will see your progress. This night, this night I pray, just as an angel of death went round Egypt, I command, let there be shiftings. I don't care who, I don't care where, I release judgment, 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 this night. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.